Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the worldwide audience and IIU fans. I, Professor Nada Ratkovic, co-founder IIU Europe, the president of Research Center, country director Croatia, and board member of IIU. Hearty welcome you with the big and warm enough to encompass you all from the international internship university on this auspicious occasion of the world environment day celebration today the theme of the event is nurture nature for sustainable future focusing on the urgent need for collective actions to protect and restore our environment but let us start with this last night india witnessed the worst scene of the train the trains collide one of the worst rail accidents in the country's history. Let us share the condolences with this people, with the victims, with more than 200 people who died, who were killed, and over 1,000 plus injured in this three-way crash involving passenger trains and freight trains in Easter Odisha state. Let's give our one minute of silence to share the condol lenses with the victims. Thank you. Our founder, Piyush Pandit, the visionary educationist, always had a dream to provide education to every learner across the world. He believes that the world is changing drastically, so there is a need to make changes in the education system. With the thought, Sir Piyush Pandit concocted the world's first digital internship university, International Internship University in 2020. IAU is providing quality, skill-based, affordable, accessible location, independent and skill-based digital education to all the learners across the globe, along with the internship opportunities, research facilities, through its thousand plus virtual courses to all the learners across the globe. Through the platform of MIO, see the massive open online courses with the aim of promoting internship opportunities and research facilities to its learners. IAU has been accredited and affiliated with the World Education Organization and international accreditation and collaborated with the old world's top universities and educational institutions. In a short span of time, IAU has spread the wings in 195 countries, six continents, with the theme of thousand plus experienced and qualified global educators around the world. IAU is registered in India, Australia, Nepal, and with the USA government. Digital education by IAU is for all, without any hurdles, as per his own wish of the learners, without any financial stress, which is easily accessible in every corner of the world. And yes, now, very soon, at the E Village, we are having a biggest interactive program called Bike Camp, and we have a new school, St. James International School. You are all invited to visit and to be part of this big event. Today, IAU is celebrating the World Environment Day 2023, the event of today with the galaxy of 151 international speakers, educators, entrepreneurs, youth, all the change makers. The theme of the event is Nurture Nature for Sustainable Future. The 5th of June is always observed as World Environment Day every year. So this period, we know all that has a catastrophic impact on the environment as our ecology is changing as a result of uncontrolled tree cutting and rising pollution. Because of this loss, June 5 is always World Environment Day, but we are celebrating today, tomorrow, and always, we can say that at IAU, every day is a World Environment Day. So 
uh, let us remind all the people's bad actions on the plastic pollution matters. And it's time to beat plastic pollution. Today, today, an amazing day, a day like opportunity to people to express their love and gratitude to our environment, to our planet, who has a multiplied role. A planet is our second mother. It is our heartbeat in the world. And without him, there seems to be no heart through. So let's know more about this and hear the experience of wonderful change makers today. But at the beginning, we want to start with a special guest, a chief guest, a person who is working very hard for humanity, not only for humanity, for the environment, for planet. He's a big humanitarian and social worker. He is well known, Dr. Raja Rao Pajidipali, the chairman of the Vishnu Humanity United International Royal Council. Welcome there, Dr. Raja Rao Pajidipali. Enlighten us at the beginning with your great speech. Raja? Dr. Raja? Okay, maybe we lost him. He was here. But okay, let us continue. He will come back. He will come back. Let us continue. So let me start with our great uh, guests today. Uh, I want to first call, uh, I want to first call uh, a well-known educator from the Philippines who is working a lot for the environment, for the SDGs. He is Dr. Dari Dekanai. Welcome, dear and respected Dr. Dari. Enlighten us with your short speech and message. Welcome. Hi, uh, Professor Nada, and to the uh, International Internship University. Thank you very much for the invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, on this auspicious occasion of World Environmental Day, we, gather, we gather here today to celebrate and emphasize the importance of nurturing nature for sustainable development. As we witness the ever increasing threats posed by climate change, pollution, deforestation, and depletion of natural resources, it becomes imperative for us to recognize our role in protecting and preserving the environment for future generations. The theme for this year's World Environmental Day, as what Professor Nada made mention, nurturing nature for sustainable development, which encamp encapsulates the essence of our responsibility towards the environment. It reminds us that our actions today will determine the quality of life of tomorrow's inhabitants of this planet. Nature in all its magnificence provides us with a wealth of resources that sustain and nourish us from the air we breathe to the water we drink, from the food we eat to the shelter we seek. Our existence is intricately intertwined with the environment. Yet in our pursuit of progress and development, we often overlook the delicate balance that nature maintains. We have witnessed the devastating consequences of our actions, rising temperatures, extreme weather events, loss of biodiversity, and the degradation of our very own ecosystems. It is now time for us to pause, reflect, and uh, take concerted action to reverse these trends. We must nurture nature and restore its equilibrium to ensure a sustainable future for all. First and foremost, we have to recognize the significance of conservation and preservation. Protecting our forests, wetlands, oceans, and wildlife is crucial for maintaining the intricate web life of Earth. We must promote sustainable practices that minimize the deforestation, encourage reforestation, and protect endangered species. By doing so, we can safeguard the biodiversity that is essential for the overall health and resilience of our planet. Secondly, 
we must address the pressing issue of climate change, our re reliance on fossil fuels, and the excessive release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere have led to the unprecedented global warming. It is high time we transition to renewable energy sources, promote energy efficiency, and adopt sustainable transportation methods. Embracing clean and green technologies will not only mitigate climate change, but also foster economic growth and create a healthier environment for all. Furthermore, we must recognize the importance of responsible consumption and production. Our current patterns of consumption are unsustainable, leading to excessive waste generation and resource depletion. By adopting a circular economy, or the principles of it, reducing waste, reusing, and recycling materials, we can minimize our ecological footprint and create a more sustainable future. To educators, we call upon you now to instill in your students a deep understanding of the environmental challenges we face. Go beyond the textbooks and theory and foster a sense of wonder and awe for the natural world. Empower your students to think critically, ask questions, and challenge the status quo. Teach them about sustainable practices, ecological balance, and the importance of conservation. By equipping them with knowledge, you can nurture the environmental stewards of tomorrow. To students, we urge you to embrace your role as change makers, your passion, creativity, and relentless pursuit of justice can be the driving force behind the transformational action. Take the lead in your very own schools, communities, and even globally to advocate for sustainable practices and policies. Organize tree planting drives, waste reduction campaigns, recycling initiatives, and awareness programs. Demand accountability from your government and corporations. Your voice matters and it has the power to shape policies and inspire others. Together, let us prioritize the protection of our ecosystems, the preservation of our biodiversity, and the reduction of the carbon footprints. Let us prioritize equitable access to clean water, air, and resources for all. Let us prioritize the restoration and the conservation of our fragile ecosystem. Let us prioritize sustainable consumption and production patterns by taking immediate and meaningful action. We can create a world where people and nature coexist in harmony. The challenges we face may seem daunting, but remember that progress is made through our very own collective efforts by joining forces from different parts of the world as educators and students, we can create a domino effect that reverberates across the globe. Share your stories, ideas, and successes with each other, inspiring a wave of change that transcends the borders. The time for action is now, and let us seize this opportunity, this World Environment Day, to unite us as a global force for change. Together, we can create a brighter, greener, and more sustainable future for all. Lastly, let us remember that nurturing nature goes beyond our individual actions. It requires collaboration and partnerships at all levels, from governments and businesses to civil society and the local communities. Together, we can create policies and implement strategies that prioritize the environment, balance economic growth with ecological well-being, and to ensure a sustainable and prosperous future for all. On this World Environment Day, let us renew our commitment to nurturing nature. Let us be the custodians of this beautiful planet, ensuring that our actions today 
sow the seeds of a sustainable tomorrow. As we embark on this journey, let us remember the words of Margaret Mead, who said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you, and let us work together to nurture nature for sustainable development. Happy World Environment Day to everyone. A big, big, big clap to our great Dr. Dari Mabuhai, Dr. Dari. We know that you are a biggest change maker, one of the biggest on the Philippines, and we are really proud on you. Let's continue working together and doing this great work. Thank you. Now, I'm coming back again. I would like to call our chief guest, our Dr. Sir Raja Rao Pajidipali. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you so much. Really, I'm honored to be here. We have a special bond with the people of IIU because these people are very uh, kind-hearted people with the uh, humanitarian purpose because uh, this IIU is collaborated with the uh, globally with the many organizations whenever wherever we see it's a Philippines it's a Malaysia it's a India whatever the organization is there one common a logo that can appear is IIU doing such a commendable job I appreciate the Ingazi uh, you are doing a great job through IIU and my dear friend, who needs no introduction, Professor Nada, you are rock star. You are rock star of IIU because whenever an IIU poster appears next to PH Pandey, we will see you. Really, the moment we see you, we feel uh, invigorated. If Nada is there, some motivation, some energy, some encouragement is there. So such good people are there on this beautiful platform. Thank you, Professor Nada, for inviting me making me part of this beautiful program. Uh, really, a World Environment Day, a great day. It's a 50 years because in 1973, on this special day, United Nations Environment uh, uh, Wing has started uh, 50 years ago on this special day. So after 50 years, now we are here celebrating this day. Whether we are celebrating or not, that is a different. But as we are all here, at least we are discussing on a burning issue. Because if we see the fires, we see that uh, we are going towards something good. Because the theme itself says, nurturing the nature for sustainability. So there is something uh, to celebrate. Because at least uh, we have identified that we have to contribute our part to make this planet a better place. So great, that's so great. Actually, the theme of this year is, as per this World uh, Environment Day 2023, uh, solution to, solutions to plastic pollutions, break the plastic. So uh, both are coincided because nurturing the nature is linked with this breaking this plastic. Because there is only one villain, there is only one villain, a mega villain, super villain, Thanos, Thanos of uh, Avengers is, here it's nothing but plastic. Of course, plastic is, in many ways, it has become a part of our lives. So it is unavoidable. It is unavoidable, it has become a part of our life. We cannot imagine our lives without plastic. So such a way it has its impact, uh, directly or indirectly, we have got addicted to these plastics. Let me say one example. In the generation of my dad, we have only one bag. We have only one bag to carry vegetables. Of course, that is plastic bag. But that served my home, or that served our home nearly, 50 years, one bag, 50 years. But if today I send to my children to buy something or to purchase something, you know, 
for each time they will come with a bag that two plastic bag single single use uh, plastic it is the menace to humanity because not plastic because there are plastic items which can help us for years together that's a different but single use a dispo plastic it is the menace to humanity so the plastic is not our enemy but the plastic remains the plastic wastage the are the waste management of plastic especially single use dispo items of plastic it's the menace so we have to recognize that part it's killing us directly and indirectly so we are talking about the nature we are talking about our planet we are talking about mother earth we are talking about uh, nature these are all great things big things uh, it's beyond our uh, control so we have to nurture the nature remember of course if we nurture a kid he becomes great if we nurture our nature it can protect us like a mother so that is for sure but you know if we do not do what we are supposed to do as a global citizen towards the nature remember nature remains forever even if we don't contribute anything nature remains forever planet remains forever globe remains forever earth remains forever that is always there but you know we won't be there if we do harm to nature anyway nature will sustain anyway nature will sustain if you pollute it if you kill it if we choke it with the uh, millions of tons of plastic even then the nature can be survived but you know who can't be survived we ourselves so we may think that by choking the nature by choking the planet by killing the oceanarian uh, living beings we think that we can survive but we cannot because always nature has its own plan it gives us a chance the nature gives us a chance not to protect the nature but to protect ourselves if you see the tsunamis if you see the earthquakes if you see any disasters how we say cutting up the trees over usage of plastic single use of dispo items so we can skew number of man made reasons then we can see a disaster the disasters which kills millions of people at once and uh, even if it go to some extent it can kill whole the planet within a second so the things will happen because nature has that system in it it can go to ex any extent to protect itself but you know who can't protect himself we are thinking that by destroying the uh, natural natural habitat we think that we can survive but we can't we don't know that fact we are even if we know but we don't realize the fact the thing is as i you bring the peesh under the able administration of peesh pande ji the globe has in united here because we can see the people from different uh, nations the thing is we have to collaborate there is a goal in sustainable development goals which is very crucial sdg 17 partnerships that is the partnerships because every nation has invented its own technology nasa has invented its technology to prevent uh, all these things and the australian sub biotech uh, firm has invented something so in every nation there is an invention to find the solution to this plastic pollution but the problem is <clears throat> there is no unity there is no uh, what we call coordination and uh, they are taking the patents and they are using it for commercial purpose but 
the global as a global citizen as a global citizen of this planet we have to come out to one platform in respect of nations and to find one common solution so it is the right platform to address such unity because there is no unity if there is no unity there is no cooperation there is no coordination because already there are inventions which can <coughs> consume the plastic waste so we have to make use of the technology so by using this technology we can do this is the best solution because if you see there is a nasa technology that nasa technology can that nasa technology can find uh, wherever there is a mass of plastic wastage so with this we can go for a cleaning day you know man ha, man is able to go into space and do many wonders in space but still today we are unable to make much progress into deep into the water so this satellite technology which is invented by nasa to be utilized to properly address the plastic wastage that is there in oceans and which is there in uh, land by, for by through these Uh, we can prevent it it is a day to prevent then there is a plastic uh, eating enzyme which is developed by japan a plastic eating enzyme that is developed by japan that is an invention so that japan uh, government or the japan organization should come forward of course they have patent and all the rights but even then they have to share the technology with all the nations to address this plastic pollution nasa has a technology to recognize the mass of waste wastage of uh, this plastic that has to be shared and japan has this uh, technology that engine which can consume this plastic that is the best way to prevent this plastic pollution and there are magnetic coils there are magnetic coils are discovered by scientists uh, which can uh, which can rupture are uh, these are uh, plastic wastage and there are plastic eating mushrooms we home a lady scientist invented that uh, uh, technology in her biotechnology fund so those plastic eating mushrooms should be developed these magnetic coils uh, which can uh, destroy these uh, uh, plastic waste uh, i mean uh, pl uh, plastic wastage uh, that technology should be shared and there is one australian company lisella holdings which develop a technology that they turn plastic into fuel that turn plastic into oil so that lisella holdings from australia should share their technology for the purpose of humanity for the purpose of protecting uh, uh, the human beings so that is a great invention it has to be shared then there is a technology uh, which we uh, build roads with the help of this plastic so there are many there are many technologies are there in the present scenario which are owned by which are patented by a different nations we all should come together and we should share because there should be no business no commercial should not should not be involved because it's a larger for the uh, to help prevent the crisis see uh, one day two days back there is a, a disaster happening nearly 300 people were killed in a a uh, pathetic train accident very sad thing that has happened here in uh, odisha state of uh, india really very sad thing we are saying the all these things are sad things after they are happening but we are unable to prevent here plastic is going to kill millions we are conducting many number of international conferences we are trying to but we are not going for the solution so as an individual everyone has to take its responsibility to address the issue to raise our voice impossible we have to bring all these technologies onto one platform there are many intergovernmental organizations which can do that under the umbrella of united nations and many governments can come and make a platform because already there are many platforms so they can find a common solution so these are from government sports and international government sport and ngos sport of course 
they will do it any time but we have to raise our voice we have to give that idea and from our part it is individual responsibility from your home from our home from i home from every individual's home we should start uh, uh, listening or minimizing the usage of single use dispo items if we do that because every day there are millions of wastage that is happening worldwide globally so let's make it uh, from our home to make this world the planet better so that we can nurture the planet we can nurture the planet for sustainability so the things will be fantastic and uh, and our next generation our next generation will take us as an inspiration and they good things for the uh, coming generation so that the sustainability prevails thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much respected sir dr raja rao padile pali yes we need to start from our home and we know that you are an amazing father an amazing educator your jason your son prince we see them they are today like youth very very active doing great for our society thank you thank you and keep doing a great work you are really a awesome thank you Thank you so much. Now, it is a moment when I would call a strong woman, an amazing woman, a woman who is for us very important. She is our trustee. She is Dr. Roshni Lal. She is coming from Australia. She is our trustee of International Internship University and Swarna Bharat Parivar Trust. Welcome, Dr. Roshni Lal, and enlighten us with your great speech. Thank you, Dada. Namaste. I, Dr. Roshni Lal. I'm so excited to be here this afternoon. My heartfelt gratitude to all the speakers. World Environment Day is celebrated on the 5th of June every year. A new theme takes birth to the celebration each year. By taking action today, we can create a better tomorrow for our living beings. Let's celebrate World Environment Day by taking positive steps towards a healthier planet. The environment is our responsibility and it's up to us to take care of it. The earth is our only home. Let's protect it with all our might. The idea behind World Environment Day is to create a beautiful world which is free of pollution. Our planet is choking on plastic. It is time to change how we can produce, consume, and dispose of plastic we use. While plastic has many valuable uses, we have become addicted to single-use plastic products with severe environmental, social, economic, and health consequences. Today, we have gathered here to celebrate World Environment Day. I am thankful to you all for giving me this opportunity. This World Environment Day safeguard the jewel that brings peace, beauty, sanity into our life. Always remember that Earth is not inherited from our ancestors, but borrowed from our children. When you let the Earth breathe, you let nature and yourself blossom. A healthy ecosystem provides clean water, purify water, Air, maintain soil, regulate the climate, recycle nutrients, and provide good food. Biodiversity is the key indicator of the health of the ecosystem. The environment is an important segment that enables the growth of all life and biotic components on Earth. It's our responsibility to protect the environment for all the species for the near future. I request you all to protect our environment and save our life and coming generation. I would like to conclude my speech, hoping you all were able to understand the importance of environment and their protection. I would like to thank Dr. Sneha Professor Nada, 
and all the hardworking team of IIU for your dedication. Thank you all. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. We are honored to have you because we need a woman who is strong woman, great woman, leader. So our great Dr. Roshni Lal is woman all in one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us always. And you are here for our big, giving us a great support every moment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I want to say that I'm not only today the host. I'm not only today the master of the ceremony. Today, I have a beautiful woman with me. She's coming from Puerto Rico. She's our IAU board member. She is Madame Virginia Riviera. So, uh, respected Virginia, welcome. And you can call our next guest speaker, uh, Dr. Vijay. Uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar Salvia. Dr. Kumari, thank you so much. Now I'm so excited to be here. So let's get ready for the next speaker. Yes, we have a special guest, Dr. Kumar, you are welcome. Dr. Vijay. Yes, yes. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to all of you. I welcome all of you on this beautiful platform. And it is our great pleasure that we have on this great platform of IIU, International Internship University. As you know, IIU working for the different, different parts for the world, also in a different sector. And today's, with respect to the World Environment Day, I congratulate and also have a greetings to all of you that our nature, we are also a part of this environment. We are also a part of this beautiful nature. So we have to maintain the nature beautifully in such a way that it is our a part of our body. Uh, just to nurture for the sustainable development for the, uh, for the environment, it requires that we have to use our environments in a daily life, environmental, with a such type of smooth and we can say a very silky manner. Because just like a body, we want as yes, we are protecting ourselves. So it means that a very sophisticated parts of our body, whatever we have, all parts, it is our uh, all parts of body. Just like to maintain our body part, we have to maintain our environment. So. Uh, whatever we are uh, eating, whatever we are fooding, what it is, whatever we are earning, it is due to the environment. As you know, we, we totally depend on the agriculture and environmental issues. So if we do not nurture here, uh, the, the, them, then we, we know that what we are taking and what will be the result of this, whatever we are doing for the nature. So there is an action and there is a reaction. So if we work for the environment, if we use the environment effectively and also for the growing, then it will give us the positive result. Otherwise, it will give the negative results, which will affect our livings, which will affect our body, which will affect our daily life, and uh, which will also affect our generation. As we are seeing, there is a misbehave of the environment because of the whatever we have destroyed, whatever we have, we can exploit our nature. It is due to, it is due to such type of uh, actions. And then we are getting such type of reactions. So we have to use our environmental, whatever our earning, whatever our production, it should be based on the recycling. It should be based on the organic. It should be based on the natural. It should be based on our environmental related activities, IoT, Internet of Things, M2M machines, machine learnings, robotics, sensor technology, microwave, or radio frequencies. And similarly, today we are getting the artificial intelligence. All we are using, it must be such that it should protect the environment. It should be gives us the 
whatever the technological effects of that uh, uh, on the environment it should be it should not restrict our environment however we have to use the latest technology we have to use the, uh, the uh, whatever the uh, communication system 5, 5g 6g 7g on which we are working so that should be such that it should not affect the uh, environmental conditions our green trees our biological ecological parts of the uh, world similarly our space our universe our radiations electricities and all so such that uh, the uh, these uh, the birds and uh, we can say the, uh, the whatever the animals these are one very environment uh, these are all making the environment and they are very much we can say depends on each other and on that this ecological balance our human life is uh, depends so uh, we have to uh, give, we have to utilize the environmentally uh, we can say friendly environment friendly materials in our daily life we are you we, we we must uh, protect our environment in such a way so that it will grow we have to uh, we have to make the research we have to make the patents we have to make the innovations we have to make the startups we have to make the employment career opportunities all should be such that that is related to the environment or environment friendly so these are all the we can say the uh, uh, steps towards the reaching to the nurture for the sustainable development goals and it is our great platform this ii is giving the great platform for giving so much activities on a we can say world level or a space level and also today our uh, our uh, good friends are on this uh, ii platform uh, mr piyush pandit dr roshni lal Similarly, uh, Dr. Pa Rajara Pagadipalli, and uh, we are seeing so many experts here. So uh, uh, this uh, we can say a, a good meeting, Dr. Nada, and also Dr. Sigda Kadam. These all are working very uh, good, and regularly we are seeing that is such type of uh, leadership and such type of uh, committee, such type of peoples can give us the good environment, can give us the good platforms to nurture the world. So thank you very much, and it is a great pleasure that we are working together. And let's come to our IIU, our research innovation startup university, international R&D Creative Organization, Happiness Club, SDG Club, and all whatever you are here. Let's collaborate for the making the world better. Thank you very much. Thank you, IIU. Thank you so much, Dr. Vijay Kumar. I totally agree with you. We need to take this into our own hands and we have to make sure that all the efforts and all the modern technology and everything that we use is environmentally friendly for our world. So thank you again for your words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you Dr. Vijay. Now we are moving a little forward to our speakers, to our amazing speakers. Let us call and invite an great woman a strong woman a fighter for the human rights she's coming from bangladesh she is Mejabin prodan faiza welcome there faiza thank you very much for having me and i'm very excited to be celebrating world environment day with all these beautiful amazing leaders across the world so greetings from bangladesh thank you um, as tomorrow, 5th June is the World Environment Day. However, the importance for this year, 23, that we, um, uh, United Nations and all the other organizations has initiated to uh, shed light on plastic um, solution and how we can reduce that use. So I will just shed a few points on that note. Um, in 1972, the UN General Assembly did designated 5th June as World Environment Day, marking the first day of the Stockholm Conference on the Human Environment. Another resolution adopted by the General Assembly the same day leads to the creation of UNP. World Environment Day 20, 2023 is a reminder that people's action on plastic pollution matters. 
The steps governments and businesses are taking to tackle plastics pollution are the consequence of these actions. Just a second. It is time to accelerate this action and transition to a circular economy. It is time to beat plastic pollution and looking for much more biodegradable and uh, nature soothing uh, alternative approach to reduce plastic pollution from our daily life and uses and look for an uh, alternative solution. At the same time, we should proceed to active new plan uh, and to uh, and look for biodegradable substance materials for daily consumption and uses professionally and personally. This day acts as a reminder to people to be more considerate and aware of the art existing conditions in terms of the environment as we all are going through global warming and other issues, oceans, lives, ecosystems. So somehow these all are interconnected on world environment. <clears throat> um, um, people take action to spread awareness as we all are participating into this and it is very important to let everyone know its importance uh, about the environment and also motivate others to do the same in hopes of creating a better future. The importance of nurturing the nature and why everyone should be responsible towards <clears throat> environmental knowledge and management for sustainability. I think somehow the management is lacking everywhere, so we need to focus and emphasize on that. The nature of our environment is the surroundings of an influence on a particular item of interest. Well, nature is unco uncountable, the natural world consisting of all things unaffected by or present predating human technology production and design example, the ecosystem, the natural environment, like a virgin ground, unmodified species, low laws of nature and the field or land. And especially soils are affected by all this uh, mismanagement of plastic uh, after use that we are throwing on the ocean and land somewhere. The major four types of environment, the atmosphere or oh, yeah, air, air, light, just a second, uh, or rocks and soil, hy hydrospheres or water and the biological component of the environment or biosphere are the four basic components of the environment. And there are two different types of environment, geographical environment and man environment. Environment can be defined as a sum total of all the living and non-living elements and their effects that influence human life and the planet life as well. Well, all living or biotic elements are animals, plants, forests, fishes, and birds. Non-living or uh, abiotic elements included water, land, sunlight, rocks, and air. Human environment. Human environment means the physical, social, and economic components, conditions, and factors that interactively determine the state, condition, and quality of living conditions, employment, and health of those. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dad, Faiza. Thank you. Wonderful speech. Great. We are crossing the five minutes, please. Okay, do I have one more minute to end this? Okay. Okay, so I think therefore we need to focus on that recycling, how to maintain those use, used plastics and put it in a some safe way so that we don't block the air and ocean and the land. And all this way, um, incorporating that biodegradable uh, materials that will help to reduce all this pollution from the environment. So thank you very much for having me.
Thank you so much, Faiza. Definitely, it's all of our responsibilities. Everything that you brought and all the information you gave us motivates us to take care of our environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are moving forward now. Uh, we will call. We have a great uh, guest. Uh, he is our great Dr. Piki Rajput coming from India. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Very, very good evening uh, to all the esteemed guests, which I can see. And Nada ma'am, thank you so much. A great gratitude to you. I was very happy to see Madam Roshni Lal also. Her speech was fabulous. Raja Rao has really created the, the road for the things. I can see Virginia ma'am here. And my gratitude to Professor Harold Bean, sir, Anju sir, Sabarwal ma'am. Right, I'm able to see Anjum uh, Qureshi ma'am, uh, Inga, uh, Dr. Inga, our friend, Dr. Anshu ji, and so many wonderful people are here on this platform. And thank you, Dr. Srinigza, for giving me this opportunity along with Dr. Nada. And in the last, I must say thank you to uh, Mr. Piyush ji for uh, organizing such a wonderful conference where we are talking about the environment. And environment, I always say, like uh, we have two mothers. One is the mother who gives us the birth. And second is our mother earth. Right, because mother, uh, our mother gives us the value and system and culture, but at the same time, our mother earth gives us a lot of the things to make the things happen. Our fooding, our clothing, our environment, our moving, everything is being dependent on the mother earth, which is very important. And as a child of the mother, as a child of the mother, it is our responsibility, right, that we should be ensuring that the mother should not be hurt. Since today we are talking about the World Environmental Day and tomorrow entire world is going to celebrate about the World Environmental Day. But I always say that you don't respect mother only for the one day. You always respect the mother 365 days in a in the entire year. Same way the environment has to be taken care of and same way environment has to be respected. I know I have four more minutes, but at the same time, I will be talking on the nurture nature for sustainable future. What a beautiful thing which you have taken. So to take care of the plastic pollution, we have the several proactive steps. I will talk about just three, four steps, which is there in my mind and reduce the use of single use plastic items such as plastic bag, the straws and cutlery, because what Raja Rao sir was talking about it, that plastic has become our life. But yes, we can have the alternate part, which is very important. Recycle plastic wherever it is possible and properly dispose it because don't litter it. Because once you will not dispose it, the animals, the stray dogs and so many things they are going to take care and it is going to again have a lot of negative environment in the entire thing. Third is educate ourselves, which is very important. We keep on educating. And if we, if we keep on educating on harms of the plastic pollution, keep on uh, guiding the other people, I, we will be able to save the mother. Earth. Encouraging the innovation in the development, which is basically for the industrialist, that they, you should come up with some of the new ways of the innovation for the eco-friendly plastic, which is there. This is on the plastic. But we have two more things are there I like to add. One is the earth protection, and second is the marine life protection. When I talk on the earth protection, conserving the protecting new natural resources such as water, forest, and wildlife. This is very, very important because when we talk about the mother earth, environmental um, uh, protection, one is the plastic, second is the earth protection in this way. Adopting the eco-friendly transportation options such as cycling, walking, public transportation, merging three, four people together, right? taking care for these things, going for the electric vehicles, which is very important, and supporting environmentally responsible businesses and industries. From this platform, I would like to put to the industries also that whatever the way which you are using it, please ensure it should be environmental friendly. The waste should not be going there uh, to, the, to the sea. And ultimately, what are the garbage comes to the sea? It goes to the ocean. So when I talk about the ocean, then the marine life protection also comes very important. Because creating and expanding the marine protected areas, which is to conserve and protect marine ecosystem and the wildlife is very important. Implementing the sustainable fishing practices, because you know that a lot of the port areas are there, a lot of the fisheries are happening there, but again, we are killing them. So sustainable fishing practices that do not lead to overfishing or damage to the marine ecosystem. Educating people on the importance of the marine conservation and how individual action can make an impact on the health of the ocean. Because these three things, if we are able to take care, uh, I will, I'm sure whatever all wonderful speakers they are going to speak, they are also going to highlight the same thing, which is equally important. One is again, plastic, no plastic. 
take care of the mother earth which is very environment and the third thing is save the marine life which is equally important so thank you so much uh, professor nada uh, for giving me uh, such a great opportunity thank you virginia ma'am thank you roshi ma'am dr roshi ma'am the first time i will to see you i keep on seeing your photograph but online i am able to see you here and and uh, piyush pandit ji and all the wonderful people dr inga who is smiling i can see her smiling face right and all the wonderful wonderful eminent personalities to whom i am able to see giving me this opportunity so not today not tomorrow every day is an environmental day every day is a mother day thank you so much thank you so much professor dr p i'm so happy to see you again Thank you, and you're absolutely right. We have two mothers, right? And the Mother Earth is the one that we have to also respect. And every time, everything that we do, we have to make sure that we're doing it respectfully towards the Earth. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Rajput. Thank you for being with us, for encouraging us always. Uh, we are really honored and grateful. Now, I would like to uh, invite our next uh, great uh, eminent speakers, a big change maker. Uh, she is well known, Dr. Anjum Qureshi. She's coming from India. Welcome, Dr. Anjum. Enlighten us, please, with your short message. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Neda, for this wonderful opportunity. And also thanks to the whole team of the International Internship University for this wonderful opportunity to speak uh, and express my views on the World Environment Day. And I have been looking to the previous, uh, listening to the previous speakers as Dr. Selvius uh, spoke about uh, encouraging research and innovations. And, uh, and Dr. P.K. Rajput, sir, as he said, we have to come up with solutions that would be environment friendly and every day should be an environment day. So I would like to just carry forward this point. Like we are talking about plastic pollution. So we, yes, there should be more of resource, there should be more of innovation. And I have been associated with the NGO where we are actually uh, taking out, we are harvesting the aquatic weeds that are called as water hyacinth. It grows very rapidly in the water bodies and it just you know covers the water bodies like a blanket and uh, it does not allow oxygen and uh, sunlight to go inside the water due to which the other aquatic plants and animals are not able to survive. So the municipalities uh, in our area, they are, uh, you know, they are taking out the uh, weeds and they are just burning it, they are just disposing it. So one of the NGOs with which I work, they have come up with a solution that the aquatic weeds are taken out, the stems are dried, and after some processing, like rolling the strips, uh, rolling the dry stem, these stems are converted into very beautiful bags and uh, yoga mats and uh, like, you know, dustbins and so many. They're making so many beautiful objects. So this is one of the method by which we can avoid using plastics. Instead of the plastic bags, we can use the bags which have been made out of the dry stem of this aquatic weeds. So this is one of the solution. But when the people are coming up with solutions, when the people are coming with, up with innovations, it is our duty to support them. Because because now, at present, nearly 200 women are working with this NGO who are coming up with so beautiful products, but they are struggling hard to find a market for that. They are struggling hard to, to convince people that this can be a better option than the plastic. So we uh, now, as we are here on the international platform, I think every one of us, we are so educated, we are so learned persons. So we should realize that we should be supporting these people who are coming up with environment friendly products. So I request every one of you to please give up the usage of plastic. Well, there are many more things that we can be talking about. And of course, there are so many technologies that are coming up to uh, help us in this and uh, dealing with the, uh, or coming up with environment friendly solutions. But whenever you find someone, when you find some NGO or any other organizations coming up with environment friendly solutions, please support them because you're not only supporting them, but we are also supporting our environment. So this was a small message from me. And once again, thank you to the team of IIU for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much, Anjum. And I think that you just brought something that's very, very important. Solutions exist, but we need to support them. So thank you again for that. I think that is very, very important. It's the first time we've heard it today. And I really appreciate that. And I think we all do here. Thank you for supporting us.
Yes, we do. We appreciate our great eminent global speakers, Dr. Anjum, wonderful as always. So now let us continue. We have a great Dr. Binu Thomas coming from India. Welcome. Dr. Binu, please unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, please. We still don't hear you. We still don't hear you. Uh, yes, we don't hear you still, Dr. Bino. Your mic is not working, so please, uh, you can disconnect and connect again. Thank you, IAU, you start... for giving me this opportunity to present in the uh, occasion of uh, World Environment Day. Uh, I'm uh, really thankful for this opportunity and I would like to, I've heard the few um, eminent speakers talk, uh, speaking about the world environment theme, which is plastic pollution. And today uh, I would like to speak on plastic pollution, which has become the most pressing environmental issues as uh, rapidly increasing production of disposable plastic products overwhelms the world's ability to deal with them. So as we know, plastic pollution is most uh, visible in developing Asian and African nations where garbage collection systems are often inefficient or non-existent. But the developed world, especially in countries with low recycling rates, also has troubling proper, uh, properly collecting uh, um, uh, discarded plastics. Now, uh, I would like to uh, uh, talk about the plastics that have been thrown in the oceans. Now, how can we stop plastic pollutions in the ocean? It is quite hard to retrieve plastics from the ocean once it is entered it. New tech technologies allow us to catch larger marine debris, but plastic, small, small plastic items and microplastics are virtually impossible to reach, especially when they are deep in the ocean. Therefore, many scientists and conservationists have declared that the best solution to prevent plastic waste from entering rivers and seas is the first place. This could be accomplished with the improve, improvement of our waste management systems and impl implementation of recycling. In addition, it is essential to reconsider the design and usage of disposable packaging and the reduction in manufacturing of unnecessary single-use plastics. Now we have negative effects on human health so we eat plastic contaminated seafood. Scientists have found microplastics in 111 marine species and around one third of these end up on our plates. We consume plastic via packaging. So we drink microplastics via bottled water. So the WHO published shocking research in 2018 that exposed the presence of microplastics in 90% of bottled water the test of which revealed 17 were free of plastics out of 259. And it also upsets the food chain because it comes in small size in sizes, large and small polluting plastics even affect world's tiniest organisms such as plankton. Now groundwater pollution, water conservation is already a concern in places ranging from California to parts of India, but world's water is a great danger because of plastics and waste. If you have ever seen a garbage dump, imagine what happens every time it rains. Then imagine that being present in uh, drinking water, groundwater and reservoirs are sus susceptible to leaking environmental toxins. And again, land pollution also, when plastic is dumped in landfills, it interacts with water and form uh, hazardous chemicals. When the chemicals seep underground, they degrade the water quality. The wind carries and deposits plastic from one place to another, increasing the land litter. Now, what we can do, turning plastic trash into currency so people would pick it up and have a small income. If plastic would be valuable, people would pick it up. Check out how Plastic Bank is turning plastic waste into social plastic to prevent plastic from entering our oceans. The Use the power of plastic eating bacteria. Scientists around the world have continued to discover different types of bacteria that can degrade specific types of plastic. These researchers, researchers are still in the early stage, but success in this field can have a big positive impact.
impact on finding new solutions for plastic waste. Now using unrecyclable plastics to pave roads, organizations are already using unrecyclable plastics to pave roads. They use plastics to reduce the use of oils going into roads. Since 40% of plastics are single use plastics that cannot be recycled and often tends to ends up in landfills, exported to different countries and eventually in our rivers, oceans and plains using unrecyclable plastics to pave roads might be a good idea. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity and I hope we can improve the uh, uh, environmental pollution by each of us giving a small effort, effort to the present problem. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Bidu. I really, really agree with you. It is up to each one of us to really stop this and really put action into it. Thanks again for your wonderful speech. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Binu Thomas. Now, uh, I want to call our youngest youth today on our great IAU platform. He is Vismay George. Welcome. Welcome there, Vismay George. Enlighten us. Please unmute yourself there. Great. Hello, everyone. I am Vismay George, a student of grade fourth, Uttarakhand, India. As the old adage goes, let's begin from the beginning. Today in my talk, I will focus on the importance of World Environment Day and our role in protecting nature and maintaining a conducive environment for all living beings on Mother Earth. Nature is referring to the filter of environment, a term derived from the French environs, something which surrounds us but in which we are not necessarily embedded. The foods we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the climate that makes our planet habitable all come from nature. World Environment Day is one of the most prominent days for recognizing and encouraging people worldwide to save and protect our environment from the challenges it faces today. It is the biggest annual event run by the United Nations to mark environmental awareness among the people. World Environment Day, also called as People's Day, is a day to do something to care for our environment. It is an important platform for promoting the dimensions of environmental sustainable development, development goals. Its main aim is to raise awareness to protect our nature and look at various environmental issues that are growing day by day. The year 1972 marked a turning point in the development of international environmental politics with the first major conference on environmental issues known as the Conference on the Human Environment or the Stockholm Conference. Later that year on December 15, the General Assembly adopted a resolution designating June 5 as World Environment Day and urging government and organization in the United Nations to undertake worldwide activities for the preservation and enhancement of the environment to deepen environmental awareness. And for the first time, the WED was celebrated on June 5 in 1974. Its celebration is based exclusively on an annual theme announced by the United Nations. Since 2015, the themes of WED have been more pragmatic and focused. The 2015 World Environment Day theme was seven billion dreams, one planet, consume with care. In 2016, it was go wild for life. For 2017, connecting people to nature in the city and onto the land, from the poles and to the equator. The theme for 2018 was beat plastic pollution, and for 2019, it was beat air pollution. Continuing the trend, World Environment Day 2020 focused on biodiversity. The theme was time for nature. For 2021, it was ecosystem restoration, and for 2022, it was only one earth. This year, the theme is to focus on solutions to plastic pollution under the campaign Beat Plastic Pollution. It is a reminder that people's action on the plastic pollution matter. The steps governments and businesses are taking to tackle plastic pollution are the consequence of this action. I urge the esteemed audience to join millions worldwide to beat plastic pollution. I feel a few ways to celebrate World Environment Day every day could be one, start a community garden, Two, host a community cleanup. Three, focus on energy conservation. Four, organize a spring cleaning event. Five, 
donate to an environmental non-profit. Six, sustainably get rid of your used clothes. Seven, take care of your things. Coming to broader aims, sustainable development implies the process of fundamental change in our social system and institutions. The Global Action Program on Education for Sustainable Development rehearses the core learning content approaches and competencies of ESD. It involves developing the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes, enabling informed decision-making and responsible action for environmental integrity, economic viability, and just a society in the present with an eye to the future. It entails using participatory learning and teaching methods that motivate and empower learners. It relates to the environmental, social, and economic pillars of sustainable development in an integrated, balanced, and post way. Comprehensively embracing interalia, poverty, reduction, and climate change. Let's care for our future generations. Let's plant a tree. Let's join hands to save nature and our environment and celebrate our biodiversity. It's time to wake up, take notice, and raise our voices. It's time to build back better for people and planet. This World Environment Day is time for nature. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Ms. May. You are amazing. I think that in our chat, everybody was commenting on how confident you are. And you know, most importantly, you're taking action. And I think you're such an inspiration to all of us. The future is not later, it's now. And we are so, so proud of you and how you're thank motivating you so others to also learn. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear Visma. Thank you. We are proud to have our youth like you. Thank you. So great, Dr. Shelley Beast, please, early childhood youth, tell us something on this. We have amazing youth here on the IAU stage. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nada. A big thank you for all the love support you have given me always and that you today. A uh, very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the world eliminaries, leaders, and everyone who is hearing us out, especially Roshni Ma'am, Dr. Rajput, uh, my dear friend Inga, and everybody who is sitting over here. So first of all, I would want to begin with that we have heard, you know, wonderful leaders talking about, talking on sustainable development. But being an educationist, I thought, when everyone is worried about sustainable development and all the leaders have great words to speak on it, I think we should start from the scratch. You know, we should start from the basics. We should start from step one. So I thought that this is a wonderful topic to be taken as a research. And being an educationist, I took this topic as a research and I did the research on this particular topic. And today, whatever I will be speaking, it will be based on my research paper, which I did at my school, keeping the primary children at view. Because when we start off uh, this um, concept of sustainable development, it has been gaining momentum in recent years due to global concerns such as climate change, environmental degradation, and social inequality. Now, early childhood education has been identified as a crucial area for promoting sustainable development as it lays a foundation for children's values, attitudes, and behaviors towards the environment and society. So, however, despite the recognition of the importance of sustainable development in early childhood education, there is a lack of understanding of how it can be effectively incorporated into the curriculum and pedagogy. So, I did the research of the primary wing at my school, and what I believed that, yes, overall, it does create an impact. So I used the methodology of the interview and I took the interview of some early educated educators and even the junior headmistress. And basically the questions which I asked to them were like, why is sustainability important in early childhood? And the answer which I got was that practicing sustainability empowers children to construct knowledge, explore values, and develop an appreciation of the environment and its relationship to the world. This lays the foundation for an environmentally responsible adulthood. Now, what are sustainable practices in early childhood education? For an example, purchase less paper, convert to electronic journals, email newsletters, and reuse one-sided paper. Reuse materials such as cardboard boxes, 
one side paper, shredded paper, bottle tops, etc. For an example, what we have done in our school, we have used all those old bottles as the bird feeder. And we have done it in almost all the trees of the school all around. Now, what is the role of the teacher in sustainable development? Teachers should be a role model for students so that cultivation of values in students may be enhanced. These values, cultivation, social awareness, economical attention, and tendency to protect the environment are the basic components of sustainable development. But then what are the sustainable development goals for children? Now, examples of goals, for an example, reducing food waste, reducing package materials, offering children more nature experiences, offering playing opportunities related to energy. Examples of actions were job shadowing in a sustainable childcare facility, reworking the outside space and switching from bottled water to tap water. Now, the most important question was, what are the three pillars of sustainability in childcare? The figure at the top of this says that uh, economic viability, environmental protection and social equity. Now, after these questions, when I observe, there were certain findings because when we implemented it, there were certain findings which I observed. And uh, since the role of schools in inculcating, inculcating the environmental values among the school children is critical, there were a couple of activities and programs which I advised them to be done in the school. And the results were tremendous because all the teachers acted as role models to the students in practicing environmental values. The awareness programs was organized on health, environment, and population education. Desirable learning environment was provided to the school. The community and the social issues were brought to the notice of all the students to develop awareness among them. The physical and the health education was given due importance. Proper maintenance of the school environment, keeping the campus clean and green. Proper utilization of the resources enabled the students felt responsible in their school. Proper socialization activities was conducted in the school to enhance their social responsibility and positive behavior towards the society and the environment. Community singing programs, national integration camps, NNS, NCC, self discounts, scouts and guides programs were just conducted during the summer camp. Also, we did the program of tree plantation. Okay, the work experience and attributively activities developed a positive value towards the work culture, dignity of labor, and the proper utilization of the leisure time. We even did the school sanitation program on activities, are in different kinds of co-curricular activities like World Environment Day, World Health Day, and everything. But uh, apart from this, you know, one should start by evaluating one's own habit to see if there are areas one can improve in. So the best thing which I realized was the storytelling and theater. You know, reading storybooks together is both a bonding parent-child activity and an excellent way to introduce your child to the issue of climate change without being overly gloomy. Where, for an example, where the wild things are, the climate change garden, or the fairy tales, and even the ice age. Okay, experience at the grocery store. Kids can learn a lot from visiting grocery store every now and then. So explain the concept of eco-friendly products to your child and make sure they understand how to check whether something is locally produced and organic. Once in the store, you can ask them to help you out, select the right products by looking out for certain labels or stickers and looking for products without plastic packaging. Also, can do recycling at home. Another issue that's important for kids to understand is food waste. You can talk about how paper is made and why recycling can help protect the forest and discuss how some materials such as plastic take hundreds of years to break down naturally and are harmful to wildlife and the environment. Next, very, very important exercise was the field visit to a local sustainable farm. You know, visiting a local sustainable farm is a great way to teach your kids about local produce and why it's important to buy organic and locally grown fruits and vegetables. Some farms even allow you to pick your own fruits and vegetables, which can be both fun and educational. The next thing which the children enjoyed actually was the nature walk. Enjoying nearby nature trails, forests, parks will make the child learn about environment. And while you are enjoying nature walks together, you can also approach the topic of how our action impact nature and what we can do to minimize that impact. And the next thing which we did was to make a mini nursery. You have the space, please make a mini nursery. It is a fun way to show your kids where their food comes from. You can start by getting together to research which vegetables grow in which season and deciding where you want to plant them. And the next important thing, and this was 
course, actually for the parents and for the teachers also, propagate the idea of carpool to the parents and the teachers while coming to school to drop and pick up the awards. Why? Because this should be continuous practice even during the annual functions, sports day, graduation ceremony, PTM and various other school events. And next was talk about the conserving water and energy, you know, uh, switch off the fans, lights, everything before they go home, switch off the water taps, it should not be run, waste only, and also taking up the cycling project together. Please start cycling more often. It's easy to fall into the habit of taking the car everywhere you go. But if you don't live too far from your child's school, the grocery store and other places, why don't you cycle up, you know? Because not only will this save on fuel costs and minimize air pollution, it's another teachable moment. It will get your kids thinking about how their everyday choices can impact the environment. And next very, very interesting thing, which I will be telling you is about promote eco-friendly canteen. Grow organic food in the school garden with the help of children during the ICPW activity and promote it in the school canteen like soup, main course dishes like spinach and rice, cabbage, ladyfinger, cauliflower, beans, capsicum, vegetables, all these things, even salads and fruits and everything and feet. I mean, children will love it like anything. So what are the sustainable development practices during early childhood, you know, supporting? And this is the concluding part of my, because I'm saying, uh, I'm running on the time. Supporting sustainable practices, parents and caregivers play a critical role in promoting sustainable practices such as recycling, composting, and reducing waste at home. In addition, educators can foster sustainability values in early childhood programs by teaching students about the environment, sustainability, conservation, and recycling, providing sustainable living environment, promoting environmental conservation, and fostering social equity. So in conclusion, sustainable development is vital for early childhood development to ensure a healthy, equitable, and prosperous future for all. Parents, educators, and policymakers must prioritize early childhood sustainability practices and promote a culture of conservation and environmental stewardship. By instilling these values into children at an early age, we can build a sustainable world that we can be proud to leave for future generations. Nature and human being are closely interdependent with each other. So in one side, as human beings are dependent on environment, in the same way, environment is also dependent upon human activities on the other side. So today we are doing consciously and unconsciously such as activities which ultimately adverse effects our environment and its natural resources. So wow. I would only want to say, we should always remember one thing that values are caught, not taught. That's why we should change our attitude and develop eco-friendly behavior with our surrounding environment and its natural resources for world welfare, as well as well human welfare. With this, I rest my case. A very, very happy World Environment Day to all who have listened to me with patient hearing and all. I wish you all the best to promote the clean, green environment worldwide. All the best. Namaskar from India. Thank you so much, Dr. Shelley. Truly, I am so happy that you were able to share this research and the simple ways that we can really empower our children to really take action and be part of this. So thank you again. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you there, Dr. Shelley. Uh, wonderful, wonderful research. Uh, great work uh, you are doing in all the fields uh, of the education. Thank you. Now, we are still in India. Uh, let us invite our great Dr. Anshu Chakraborty. You are welcome, Dr. Anshu. Enlighten us. Dr. Anshu, she's here. Please. Unmute yourself, please. We don't hear you. Dr. Anshu, please unmute yourself. Still muted. We don't hear you. Really sorry. Please uh, get out and connect again. We don't. Hello. Okay, now yes. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Anshu. 
Chakravarti ji said. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Nada, Mr. Piyush Pandit, Ms. Uh, Dr. Snigna, and IIU for giving me this opportunity to speak on World Environment Day on this platform. So, uh, nurture is a building, nurture is love, nurture is nourishing, a caring hug. Nature is a feeling, nature is a home, nature is everything from trees to Rome. While nature is an environment and the natural system and resources that sustain life on earth, nurture refers to the human action, behavior, and policies that positively impact the environment. Good evening, everyone, and all present here. I'm delighted for being able to be given the opportunity to present and speak about World Environmental Day. First of all, we need to address why sustainability is important. More specifically, what is sustainability? Sustainability is a meeting the need of people presently without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs, simply a gift to our coming generation, nature. Let's take an example. In our India in 1970, the Chippo movement, a non-violent social and ecological event by rural women of India in the, that aimed at protecting trees by simply hugging them and prevent from the cutting. Cutting trees would, be, would have rather benefited them back then, but by saving those trees, they saved an entire forest and fresh air to breathe for their generation to come. The sustainability is crucial for the future. And so is nurturing. Just like a mother cares for her baby, we must care for our environment. It is a human action and behavior that can nurture the environment for the sustainable future. The interconnection between social, economical, and environmental factor is the main factor for any sustainability criteria. Nurturing is a process. And just like any other process, there are certain steps required for sustainable development as well as nurturing. So first, conservation and preservation. Conservation and preservation is must. Every material in our culture ultimately comes from natural resources. The role natural resources has on our role. That is why we, that is why it is and protection, preservation is very important. Now, the second one is reduce, reuse and recycle. So practicing the three R's is a fundamental approach to waste management by reducing number, reusing items whenever possible and recycling materials. We can minimize the amounts of waste generated and conserve valuable resources. A head to the nation of healthy communities. And so, nature itself is important in achieving global sustainability. Sustainable action means. Yes, we are so sorry that our great doctor Anshu has issues and we didn't understand, but what we hear, it was really amazing. I think that... that there are people who are committed in ensuring the clean environment, not just in our days, but also tapping into a generation that will come. So to conclude, I encourage everyone to adopt a sustainable lifestyle to nurture, protect, and value our nature, our environment, and in a way ourselves and our coming generation. I'd like to request everyone to plant trees and save our environment. 
and I wish you all a very happy and world environment. Day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anshu. And I have to say that what we were able to hear was absolutely on point. Definitely our lifestyles reflect what we can do for our environment. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anshu. Uh, really wonderful. Uh, great uh, short message for spreading around the globe to take our action. Now we are still in India. I uh, want to call our great Dr. Suraya Bano. Welcome, Dr. Suraya Bano. Enlighten us with your short message, please. Thank you, thank you, and and all. This is Professor Dr. Suraya Bano from Chhattisgarh, India. I want to say a few words on impact and importance of environment protection and awareness. As our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said, connecting with nature means to connect with ourselves. If we do so, we nurture a better planet. We have to move zero defect and zero effect, zero defect in production with no adverse effect on the environment. And he also said climate change is a pressing global challenge. It calls for a collective human action and a comprehensive response in India. Faith and nature have had a deep link since ancient time. Environmental awareness means being aware of the natural environment and making choices that benefit the earth rather than hurt it. Some of the ways to practice environmental awareness include using safe and non-toxic building supplies, conserving energy and water, recycling activism and all others. Human impacts and phys the physical environment in many ways, over pollution, popular po burning fossil fuels and deforestation. Changes like these have triggered climate change, soil erosion, poor co air quality and under drinkable water. The environmental impact statement is a government document that underlines the impact of a proposed project on its surrounding environment. The types of the environmental impacts I, know, I want to focus. Climate change include global warming, acid rain, photochemical smog, and other form of pollution, ocean acidification, displacement of wildlife, resource depletion, ozone depletion, greenhouse effect, desertification, deforestation, economic impact, well-being impact, policy impact, environmental impact, and social impact. And in fact, is a change or result, the rain had an effect on the condition of the grass. An effect can be positive or negative. Impact on the other hand primarily means something that comes out about as the result of something coming forcibly into contact with something else. As United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, the scientific implication of climate change are clear and so is the math. To have a chance of avoiding global warmings, most dunious impacts, the world must cut greenhouse gas pollution nearly in half by 2030 and erase its carbon footprint entirely by mid-century. Positive impact is defined as an activity having a positive impact on a least one of the three pillars of sustainable development, environmental, social, economic development, provided an appropriate management of the potential negative impacts. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, many eyes go through the meadow, but few see the flowers in it. Nature is an endless combination and repetition of a very few laws. Now, I conclude, environmental awareness is a critical because it can help to minimize pollution and global warming. It can also lead to a more sustainable world by promoting renewable resources such as solar, wind, and water. The importance of environmental impact assessment is to promote a safe environment and sound sustainable development by measuring the environmental impact likely to be caused by project. The environmental impact assessment shows impact levels on marine 
species, land, plants, animals, microorganisms, and non-living organisms. And now I end my speech with golden words said by Mahatma Gandhi, the earth has enough resources for our need, but not for our need. Thank you. Thank you, Nada Madam and all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sreya Bano. I am very, I mean, I totally agree with you. And I think that environmental awareness is still so important. That's why we're having this today and tomorrow. And definitely this is going to promote a safe environment for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sreya Bano. Good evening, madam. This is uh, Professor Agnara from India. Yes, Professor. But uh, Professor, we are now. Hello, and... Madam. Hello. Yes, Professor. Hi. Yes. Hello, Madam. I, I am Dulap Tripathi from India. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. We hear you. Yes, please tell. Hello. I am Dulap Tripathi from India. Hello, madam. Good evening. I think that we have two two speakers who want to speak at the same time. Uh, but uh, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward, please. Uh, a little bit. This faster. is uh, Professor Agvendra Madam from India. How do you schedule on fourth? Professor Rajan, please. Raghavendra from India. Okay. Welcome. Uh, shall I start my session? Uh, professor, I didn't call you. My apologize. Uh, I didn't call you. Uh, now uh, the order is of uh, uh, Shaikh Yamshid from India. Uh, my schedule, madam. My schedule. Uh, Hello. Professor. Hello. Professor, please. Professor, please. But little passion. We are going by the order. Hello. So... Hello. Hello, madam. Good evening. Good evening, Hello. sir. Good evening. I am Durlap oh. Tripathi. I am Durlap Tripathi from India. Uh, Welcome. So, good evening, uh, okay. professors and uh, educators. Uh, we're going by a flow, so we will call you up uh, in the order. I know we're running a little late, so please be patient with us. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Whatever are your queries, you Today. please put it on the WhatsApp. Let's not interrupt the conference. Yes. It's our we humble have request. a great conference. Thank you. Please, little patient. Thank you. Today, uh, today respect. is my schedule, so I, uh, with respect, today is my schedule, so I talk about uh, World Environment Day, Dr. Dulak Tripathi from India. Kindly check to the my schedule. Uh, respected. Okay, please continue with your speech. You are welcome. We are little running. Please, our great audience, our great speakers, little patient. Uh, Dr. Derlov, please continue with your speech. Okay. Uh, res uh, my apologies, respected Sheikh Yamshid. Hello. Hello. Am I audible, ma'am? Let us let us put Mr. Durlov Tripathi to make her speech, please. Am I audible? Yes, brother, you are audible. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend my profound gratitude to all the members and managing body for giving me such a warm opportunity to speak in front of intellectuals like you. Today, we are here to celebrate one of the most significant day, that's in World Environment Day. 
observed globally every year on 5th of June. The day helps to raise awareness about the importance of environment and its re related factors. Today, our theme is Nurture Nature for Sustainable Future. Weirdly, uh, from the ancient periods, uh, nature has nurtured and preserved us. Now it's our responsibility to nurture the nature in order to secure our future. The aim of World Environment Day is to encourage the masses to become active and attentive supporters of sustainable and equitable uh, living. Our green world is now in jeopardy and vulnerable to danger at an alarming extent, as humans have depleted and devastated natural resources like water, forests, minerals, soil and air by polluting them. Some major challenges are uh, global warming. Foremost symptom of natural imbalance is global warming, which indeed is a global threat. When greenhouse gases uh, accumulate and cause the temperature to rise, we see the greenhouse effect. It has an impact on the rising of world ocean level and the melting of Arctic ice and the rest of other various glaciers. Ozone layer depletion, another major challenge we are witnessing gravely. It is a, a complex issue that the entire humankind is grappling uh, with the ozone layer absorbs UV radiation, which is damaging to human. Uh, it can cause skin cancer if left unchecked. Another major challenge uh, the world is witnessing is the deforestation. There is no doubt that, that uh, plants and trees are the essential components of human life. Forests are being cut down in an unethical manner. It has resulted in the climate change at a faster rate. Climate change has resulted in uh, disastrous floods and droughts to an extremely large extent. With the rise of the industries, and migration of people from villages to cities in search of employment, there has been an increase in the problem of proper housing and unhygienic conditions of living. Uh, there are various other hazards that mankind is tackling with like air pollution, noise pollution, water pollution, destruction to the bio, uh, biodiversity and destructive scenarios faced by the entire ecosystem. No doubt, Mankind is responsible for these harmful factors. One of my, and of course yours, favorite American analyst, Mr. Lester Brown, who by profession is an environmental analyst. He is the author of over 50 books on uh, global environmental issue. He is an icon of several movements like the Green Revolution, Population Control, Sustainable Development and Environmental Conservation. In his words, he says, we have not inherited uh, this earth from our forefathers. We have borrowed it from our children. This is a revolutionary statement given by Mr. Lester Brown. It uh, focuses attention on the position of man in this universe. People take it for granted that the earth is theirs as they have inherited it from their forefathers. They have forget the fact that the real owners of the land are our children. We have indiscriminately overused and devastated the natural resources. Destruction of natural resources will obviously create an ailing environment. In short, we must preserve natural resources and ha uh, hand them over to children. In, uh, in, uh, in fact, as they are the real owners, their intellectuals, we, the human beings, have exploited the natural resources indiscriminately. In the zoo at Lusaka, there is a cage with a note that reads, the world's most dangerous animal. However, inside the cage, there is no animal, but a mirror which shows the visitor's person's reflection. The note severely signifies that man is the most dangerous being on this planet. He is not only resp responsible for the degrading condition of the planet and depletion of resources, but also poses a danger for other living species. A human being is far more destructive and threatening to the ecology of the earth than any other being. 
I'm here now uh, with some suggestion, or I would say with some measures uh, which can help us to rekindle our theme, nurture nature for sustainable uh, future. Really protecting the nature is mine, yours, and everyone's job because we all have an impact. Uh, the first uh, and the foremost step is to knowing, contemplating and introspecting the importance of nature. We have to contemplate the fact that without nature, we can't survive. Without preserving it, our coming generations would face profound difficulties. If we kept neglecting our duties and responsibilities towards the restoration of nature, consequences could be dangerous. In our last session, I addressed the fact that if we want the change, we have to be the change. Planting more and more trees can help, uh, help us on preserving our precious nature. Of course, it is a simple yet effective way to restore the natural environment, uh, recognize diversity and relations between people, engage uh, communities as restoration leaders and draw on their knowledge, uh, create uh, locally specific restoration approaches within uh, grassland, forest, uh, forests, uh, mangroves, and peatlands, restoration aims to enhance the e ecological inter uh, integrity of landscapes and human well-being within them. Uh, by following three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Do upcycle the things you don't need, eat locally grown uh, foods, make an effort to con uh, conserve water and electricity uh, around the houses. Be volunteer to clean up your community because volunteer work has direct positive impact on our environment. Most importantly, com uh, compost your food uh, scraps and yard waste. We should use a bin to gather uh, the scraps, save energy and natural resources. We should spread awareness and should encourage others to help to save the environment. We have to educate the people, otherwise much difficulties and problems are awaiting. In Kashmir, India, various NGOs are working passionately for the preservation of environment. We often visit to the far flung and distant areas and educate the local population regarding the ways for the preservation of environment. Some NGOs, namely Awami Welfare Forum Kashmir, Center for Research on Public Policy, Kashmir, India, Kashmir Writers Association, Kashmir, India, respectively, we shall extend and expand the vision in the future as well. Last but not uh, the least, I would like to thank you all uh, for your kind attention. Let's separate awareness to each and every soul regarding the importance of environment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Um, I want to say that I Hello. totally agree with you. Okay, Hello. go ahead, Mr. Javab. Go ahead. Madam, this is Professor Agvindra from India. My schedule, madam. Uh, respected, madam. please wait. Please wait. It is not your shadow, so please wait. Uh, uh, great, time, uh, great Dr. Shaikh. Wonderful speech. Our great youth now. Uh, we are calling uh, uh, professor, uh, professor uh, from India. Uh, let Agenda us Yen. enlighten us. Uh, re please respect other when they are talking. Please um, respect it. Ambassador Dr. Piyush Raja, welcome. Thank you. Namaste from India. Let me share the screen. Uh, we cannot share the screen, so you can only speak, please. Uh, we, we don't have a uh, we don't have ability to share the screen. I'm sharing here for so we cannot share. You can speak. Okay, okay. But it is showing. Uh, you can. I can share the screen. No, you cannot share the screen. Okay, I, have, okay, okay. I have issues here in Croatia, so no sharing. Okay, okay. Just uh, then I am presenting my paper. Yes, okay. Please, five minutes, five minutes, Professor. Okay, okay. I, I just take two or three minutes. 
I no have 10 no... minutes, five minutes, no 10 minutes, five minutes. No, no, two or three minutes. Okay, thank no. you. I have uh, prepared a paper, Nurture Nature for a Sustainable Future, a uh, pathway towards environmental stewardship. The introduction of the paper, the earth is facing a, a critical juncture in his, its history as the cumulative impacts of human activities have led to serve environmental degradation and emergence of the complex sustainability challenges, climate change and biodiversity loss deforestation and pollution threaten the delight uh, balance of the ecosystem and pose significant risk to the human well-being. Recognizing the urgent need for action, individual communities, organizations, and government are increasingly uh, uh, embarrassing the concept of environmental stewardship as it means to address the challenges, pave the way towards the sustainable future. The problem, uh, next is a problem statement, the destructive consequences of the unsustainable uns, uh, practices have become evident across the globe. Un underscoring the importance of the uh, revaluating uh, our relationship with the natural world, human activities driven by economic growth and consumption patterns have strained the earth resources, disrupted a uh, critical ecological process. A research objective of my paper. The primary objective of this uh, research uh, paper is to explore the concept of nurturing nature as the pathway towards achieving a sustainable future by examining uh, the interactive interdependence between human and the environment. Uh, my paper aims to highlight the significance environmental stewardship in addressing the environmental challenges uh, that we face today, the research will delay the principle and pra uh, practices of nurturing nature, uh, restoration and responsible resource management. Uh, these are the challenges. I am just, uh, you know, these are the challenges. The first challenge is overcoming barriers. The journey towards environmental stewardship and nurturing nature is not uh, without its challenges. Our uh, primary objective is, the, uh, is to change the, uh, uh, the conventional practices, economic consideration, wishes, interests, and uh, short-term thinking often hinder uh, the adoption of sustainable solution. Uh, second one is economic consider uh, consideration. Uh, economic consideration often plays a significant role in shaping environmental practices. The uh, transition to sustainable approaches may require initial investment, the changes in business models, which can pose financial changes and uh, individual organization and the government. However, it is essential to recognize uh, the long-term cost uh, of uh, um, the short-term economic benefits. The third one uh, is, the third challenge is equity and social justice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much for your great Hello, research. Madam. Yes, yes, sir. Just one minute. 
नमस्ते माय मैडम नमस्ते मैडम नमस्ते सर नमस्ते वी हियर यू वेलकम वेलकम थैंक यू आई एम त्रिपाठी आई एम प्लीज्ड एंड ऑन अनदर साइड आई एम फायर एंड इमरजेंसी सर्विसेज लाइफ सेविंग एंड प्रॉपर्टी सेविंग जॉब सो मैम थैंक यू एंड ग्लैड टू यू uh i i want the um, just one word is world environment day is a nature chain is chain is break through is our everything is problem so kindly all excellency and all respected uh member so not only word is create a uh, individually or uh, group everything plantation save life save nature save world thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much very shortly very impressive great wonderful respected durlove tripathi big big thank clap. you ma'am big big clap namaste 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 see so, you ma'am thank you now thank you ma'am we ma are moving from you to our next the uh, eminent global speakers he is our great doctor amujuri biswanati welcome amujuri enlighten us amujuri biswanati welcome we see you are here am i audible ma'am yes you are please open your camera yeah that's good uh... a beautiful man needs to have a open camera so okay uh, good warm good morning good afternoon and good evening across the globe who are watching wonderful event on world environment day 2023 which is organizing by iiu international intensive unity university uh first of all i convey my much gratitude founder of iiu dr pius pandit and today's host as well as project director professor nada rakovic uh, and uh, all respected speakers today we are here at unique platform to discuss about environmental day our environmental issues or environmental aspects and how to control about the different type of pollutions and how to manage entire the illogical and eco imbalance of ecological system on our planet earth we have to remember there is no planet b why because in our nature there is only one planet earth with full of natural resources and living being in only in earth there is possibilities of living being so among living being the only human is most most important and knowledgeous living being among all so it is our responsible to conserve preserve and protect ourselves and our animal as well as entire environment in this digital era in 21st century skill era we are facing many challenges to as part of our life daily life and we had to find the solutions of our challenges as well as problems today for the year 
United Nations also called on the theme of beat plastic pollution, solutions to plastic pollution. We are facing different types of pollutions. Among them, plastic is also a major issue. However, we are using different products, material, uh, minerals and uh, materials. Plastic is also key component today's life as well as to avoid plastic pollution, we have to promote eco products. That means green products, which are available either directly from nature, indirectly by man-made eco products. So in the replacement of plastic products, we have to use eco products and promote ecological balance on a planet Earth. Otherwise, we will face a difficult and a large problem in future. Our nature is full of five elements, water, air, soil, sky, and fire. That means temperature. As well as day by day, greenhouse effect, global warming, temperature also is going on. In India, now summer season is going on almost above 42, nearest 45, 46 degrees Celsius temperature is going on in all over India. Why it is so happening? Because of lack of trees, that means de uh, deforestation. Of. So we have to plant more and go green more, then only we can control the greenhouse effect or global warming issues on our planet Earth. Third one is we have to create awareness about environmental issues among the students, among the public, through the collaboration of different type of organizations, government organizations or either non-government organizations, civil societies from grassroots level. In this concern, we have to make different research works to implement how to control our pollution, how to reduce pollution through research methods and innovation methods. We are using different traditional methods. However, day by day, there is increasing different type of pollutions day by day. So we have to provide new frontiers and new researchable innovations to balance the ecological system on our planet Earth. Fourth one is waste management. In our daily life, we are creating, we are increasing the waste materials for we know very well, triple R, RRR, recycle, reuse, reduce. But I add, I own myself, I added this one, fourth R that means repeat. We have to repeat the chain system of three R's, then only we can achieve the entire the system of cycle of three R's. The fourth one R is repeat. So being as a director and CEO of Green Care Society India and uh, environmentalist educator, I am also working in the field of uh, environment protection as part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals from 1 to 17, especially goal number 13, and Climate Action. And we are proud on you there, Amujuri, a sure. big clap for Green Society India. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you. Amujuri. Thank you very much. So Wonderful. I appeal in front of the all the speakers and public come forward and do green uh, footprints of green and uh, save our environment for our next future generation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big clap for our great Amujuri.
Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, now we are moving forward. Uh, we have one student with us who needs to go on a journey. So Dirk, Hamid, Rasul, welcome. Please enrich on us with your speech shortly. Hamid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, and we can see and we can hear you. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Nada, for giving such a great opportunity to share uh, on this great and amazing conference on World Environment Day. So I would like to uh, share a short presentation after it, I am going uh, an official tour from our department. So what are plants? So we should discuss that what are plants? Then what's what the rule of plants uh, in sustainable and healthy future? So as we are all know that plants are the main source of our oxygen uh, in this beautiful uh, earth surface. If there is no oxygen, so uh, there is no life exist on this uh, planet. So plants are the main source of oxygen. If we are protecting environment, if you want to protect environment, we should protect and plant trees more and more. If we are planting more and more trees, so we will protect our environment more healthy uh, with health and safety. Uh, if reducing air pollution, air pollution uh, is the main cause of all problems uh, on this planet, not only for human beings, but for all living organisms existing on this earth surface, maybe in ocean, maybe on this planet. So it is not, if we are protecting uh, other organisms, if we are uh, if we are planting more and more trees, this means we are protecting uh, ourselves. If we we will be healthy, if the this planet is healthy. Thank you so much for giving uh, such a great opportunity to share a short words. I have prepared my presentation, but we have our own tour. So this reason, thank you so much. Thank you so commit much. next time. We are waiting you and yes. For all of you here, amazing, great guests, you are you are free to join us anyway in our training sessions. So be feel be free, contact us and be with us, and then speak how much you want. You will know you will not have a limit for your speak. Thank you, great Hamid Rasul. Thank you, proud on you, a great student, great student, amazing student from IAU Council of the Student. Great. Uh, moving Thank forward, you, we are we are going to in we are go, we are going to India. Uh, we have an amazing professor Dr. Richa Ranjan. Welcome, welcome Dr. Richa. Enlighten us. Thank you Professor Nada. And many congratulations to team IAU. Professor Nada and founder of IIU for bringing such issue which is need of NR. And I'll start with three words, which are Hindi words, Mukhar Hua Mon. Mukhar Hua Mon, which means nature has got voice. We all today on this global platform are speaking on behalf of nature. We all are language of nature today. Nature is soothing and silent, according to human mindset. If we take something from someone, we should give something in return. So we should balance the interplay between nurture and nature. So uh, it is the bargain of give and take. We should nurture as nature is finite. Today I'm here before you to address a topic that is crucial for the survival and prosperity of our planet the interplay between nurture and nature in creating a sustainable future. The way we nurture and protect our natural environment is linked to the future we build ourselves and generations to come. It is responsibility we cannot in, uh, ignore, ignore, afford, 
And as human beings, we are both products and stewards of the nature. Our very existence and well-being are dependent on the resources and ecosystems that surround us. And yet, throughout history, we have been we have often exploited and neglected the, these precious gifts, failing to recognize the delicate balance that sustains life on earth. However, it is not too late to change our course. We have the power to create a sustainable future by nurturing and preserving a natural environment. And nurturing, nurturing nature begins with understanding and appreciating its value. And uh, we can shift our behavior towards sustainable practices that respect the limits of the natural world. At the same time, we must acknowledge the role of nature in shaping our future. Education and awareness are vital tools in cultivating a sustainable mindset. And I'm speeding up my <laughs> lecture because I know I'm having only two minutes, more two minutes. Through education, we can foster a deep connection with nature, instilling a sense of responsibility to protect and nurture it. However, nurturing nature is not a responsibility that falls solely on the shoulders of government and organization. Each one of us has the role to play. Every individual choice we make, every action we take has the potential to either harm our nature and by making conscious decisions in our daily lives, such as reducing our energy consumption, supporting sustainable products and advocating for environmental policies, we can collectively make a significant impact. And some key points to keep in our uh, nature, not that nature, our nature, human nature, are uh, prioritizing the conservation and uh, preservation, sustainable development practices, environmental education awareness, which includes cru crucial role in nurturing a sustainable mindset by providing environmental education and raising awareness about the importance of nature, responsible consumption and production, promoting responsible consumption, which includes reducing waste, recycling, re reusing materials, and supporting businesses and prioritize sustainability in their operations. Next, which is very main important point is collaboration partner partnerships, building uh, sustainable future requirements, collaborations with uh, governments, organization, communities, and individuals. By fostering partnership and collective action, we can pool resources, share knowledge, expertise, implement effective solutions on a larger scale. So collaboration enables us to tackle complex environmental challenges more effectively. So I'll relay a few suggestions and points. Embrace renewable energy, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Next is support conservation efforts, back initiatives that focus on conserving, reserving ecosystem, sustainable transportation, which will encourage the use of uh, public transport, uh, transportation, carpooling, cycling, walking as alternatives to private vehicle, supporting the development of electric vehicles and infrastructure for sustainable transportation can significantly reduce greenhouse gas emission and air pollution. We should advocate for environmental policies, foster sustainable consumption, educate and raise awareness. This is my last point. We should educate and raise awareness, share information about sustainability, plant trees and support green spaces. And last is engage in responsible tourism when traveling, choose eco-friendly accommodations to operations that prioritize sustainability and conservation. Respect local cultures, wildlife, and ecosystem, and leave a positive impact on the places we visit. And even small actions can be done in larger manner. Happy Environment Day to all. And I'm advocate of environment, and I rest my case here. Namaskar. Wonderful, great, great, Richa. We are proud on you and we are so honored to have you today with us on the great IIU stage. And yes, we are waiting for you again. So you are welcome. Thank you, Thank you Professor Nada. Yes, now uh, I'm calling our great uh, Professor Viswanath Panijani. He had issues at the beginning, so your turn is now. Welcome. Madam, Madam, my schedule is Professor Ragnar from India. 
హలో మేడం ఎస్ మేడం ప్రొఫెసర్ హలో హలో ఆ మేడం ఐ డాక్టర్ విశ్వనాథ్ పాణి గ్రై ఎమ్ ఐ అడివల్ మేడం హలో yes yes you are sir you are audible yes welcome thank you very much i i you dr pius pandit sir professor nada ma'am and my entire team to give me this opportunity on this global forum uh, to speak something on the environment our subject is nature nurture of nature so nurture of nature why it is needed why it is needed today because we have spoiled the all pure pureness of the nature nature and our mother earth i would like to speak this in a few hindi lines of a poet he what he is saying it is the clear picture today what is happening mera aanchal sukh gaya sukha mera chhalni daman khoon sane ab mere aangan sukh gaya ab jarra jarra tapis bachi hai meri chhati mein kahin jalmagn hote mere kinare तो कहीं आग उगले पत्थर बने अंगारे खूब रुलाया तुमने अब तो आंसू भी हैं सूख चले तुम्हें जन्म दिया मैंने देखो मुझे ही तुम मार चले अर्थ इज आवर मर्थ मदर अर्थ सिंह वी 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 आर वी आर सन ऑफ मदर सन ऑफ अर्थ पुत्रो अहम माता भूमि पुत्रो अहम पृथ्वीम इट इज टोल्ड इन अवर पुराण एंड वेदास but today what we are doing we our each and every activity is going against to our nature and our mother so this problem is today earth is our mother and we are her children it is our responsibility to protect something wrong to protect and conserve earth and environment but the sad thing is that we are not able to fulfill the responsibility of being the children of the earth properly and due to our own activities today the earth is in danger like never before due to human interference in nature the link of basis in the element of nature water air soil forest are breaking nature is getting eroded as a result calamities are taking a new form and posing a challenge to the living beings happening somewhere dot somewhere flood somewhere earthquake somewhere tsunami somewhere volcano somewhere serious disease don't know how many challenges are coming due to degradation of nature in its purest form and lack of basic element today the earth is surrounded by fire inside and outside from all sides and the earth is continuously heating up if we talk about this year then every every day somewhere or the other it is summer many small and big summits were held at the world level to find solution for the for the de- deteriorating health of earth but the expected success was not achieved and the con- condition of the earth is getting worse and worse in 1972 92 97 2002 to 7 2009 2012 2015 2018 and 2022 world leaders have tried to find a solution but sitting together on one platform to save the earth from this crisis but every time the differences between rich countries and poor countries and developed and developing countries has increased this gap came in the way and no consensus could be reached had the kyoto protocol of 1970 1997 and cop between faithful followed it w- it would have been a good step but that too in the uh, that too in the construct of the quadri- quadrilateral of important and developed countries of big nations this season has not been able to decide the destination india has the almost important responsibility at cop 27 to bring the international community together for implementation implementation as they must stand in solidarity to address the compounding climate crisis the world would be keenly following india's leadership role in climate action at cop27 and g20 before this various programs were held all over the world and uh, india to save the earth and environment 
being the founder and president of green care society india just our ceo see our uh, uh, director of our institution organization and ceo mr amajuri has also uh, told uh, in detail of, uh, activities of our uh, organization but i i also want to speak something our organization green care society india also organized many programs of seal the deal save the earth environment conservation tree plant plantation grassroots level awareness beat plastic pollution stop pollution clean and green sanitation in many places of the country and sent a message to the world leaders green care society india is taking initiative to fulfill united nations sustainable development goals from 1 to 17 especially sustainable development goals 13 climate action sdg 14 below water sdg 15 life on land are aimed to fulfill as part of environment conservation and save nature and biodiversity concrete decision should be taken and followed green care society india is collaborating with different organizations organization like united nation environment program united nation development program united nation water unesco ministry of environment forest and climate change government of india government of chatisgarh government of odisha convention on biological diversity national biodiversity board national green tribunal pollution control board chatisgarh state biodiversity board world environment council the institu the institution of green engineers idym foundation etc global warming is not controlled controlled then in the coming times where there will be sever severe water crisis there will be an unprecedented fruit food crisis the extent of earth and animal will also be in danger a, a combined study of the scripture and science so shows that there have been five holocaust on earth according to study of scientists and environmental research uh, research organization 85% of animal and species were destroyed and extinct in the first holocaust at the time of second holocaust 70% of the species of fish and other marine animals had disappeared for the third time 15% of animal species were destroyed in the fourth and fifth fifth calamity event three fourth of the population of living being got absorbed in the chicks of time now it is the turn of the sixth catastrophe the concern of scientists has increased because of what will happen in this catastrophe today is environment day let us all together take a pledge to save the earth and environment from this catastrophe water forest land people animal will protect everyone will cover the earth with greenery will keep it healthy we are also doing uh, we are also uh, 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 very important roles ac active roles in 3r reduce reuse and recycle and uh, now uh, at the, uh, uh, concluding my speech i request all global leader all speakers let us come join hands uh, to make this earth a better place to live thank you very much again i convey my several thanks my express my gratitude to iiu andrebal uh, pius pandey sir nada ma'am nada ma'am professor nada ma'am and all the team thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much powerful call to action Madam, very, this very is professor raghavendra so from Karn uh, india please madam professor raghavendra india professor raghavendra what was the problem to wait till now you your time is just now you are now on the slot you are you are coming whole time here and interrupting the people to speak please don't do that that is not kind now it is your time respected professor ragavendra you are welcome thank thank you madam no my schedule earlier was 7 o'clock so that's no, what your, your schedule is now okay okay madam yeah the, my best wishes to organizers 
the speaking on the biodiversity conservation uh, biodiversity conservation uh, that refers to the protection upliftment and the management of biodiversity in order to derive sustainable benefits for the present and the future generations uh, biodiversity conservation is the protection management of biodiversity to obtain the resources for sustainable development biodiversity conservation has three main objects uh, to preserve the biodiversity of species sustainable and respect sir on the conferences on the conferences you need to open your camera please open your camera open your camera please sir good evening madam okay. uh, this you. is uh, thank you professor agnandel from india speaking on the biodiversity conservation biodiversity conservation that refers to the protection upliftment and the management of biodiversity in order to derive sustainable benefits for present and the future generations uh, that i defined what is biodiversity conservation so the conservation that has the three main objectives to preserve the diversity of species sustainable utilization of the species and ecosystem to maintain life supporting systems and essential ecological process this is what uh, we are going to call it as the biodiversity conservation objective biodiversity refers the variety and variability among the living organisms and ecological complexes in which they occur uh, it can be conserved in the two main ways the first one which we are going to considering is the in situ conservation ex situ conservation whereas in situ conservation of biodiversity is the conservation of the species within their natural habitat in this method the natural ecosystem is maintained and protected the in situ conservation has the several advantages in the cost effective and convenient method of conserving the biodiversity a large number of living organisms can be conserved simultaneously since the organisms are in a natural ecosystem they can evolve the better than they can easily adjust to the different environmental conditions uh, just you take the best example about the protected area where in situ conservation takes place that includes the national parks wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves take the best example about the national park these are the small reserves that maintained by the government is boundaries are the well demarcated and human activities such as grazing forestry habitat and cultivations are prohibited take the best example uh, bandipur national park in india where are the wildlife sanctuaries so these are the regions where only the wild animals are found human activities uh, take about the timber harvesting cultivation collection of the woods and the other forest products are allowed here as long as they do not interfere with the conservation project at the tourist cities these places are recreation biosphere reserve that also coming under the in situ conservation whereas the multi purpose protected areas where the wildlife traditional lifestyles of the inhabitants and the domesticated plants and the animals are protected the tourist and the research activities are permitted here whereas the point to be noted about the ex situ conservation whereas this is also one of the method in the biodiversity conservation whereas the exit to conservation of biodiversity that involves the breeding and the maintenance of the endangered species in artificial ecosystems take the example at the zoo nurseries botanical garden gene banks there is less competitions for the food water and the space among the organisms whereas this also got several advantages the main advantage of the exit to conservation the animals are provided with a longer time and breeding activity the species breed in cap captivity can be reintroduced in the wild genetic techniques can be used for the preservation of the endangered species uh, the main thing which we are going to be considering today is the biodiversity conservation where the biodiversity conservation have its own strategies 
where some of the important point to be noted about the strategies for the biodiversity conservation, all the varieties of the food, timber plants, livestock, microbes, and the agriculture animals should be conserved. All the economically important animals should be identified and conserved. Unique ecosystems should be preserved first. The resources should be utilized effectively. Poaching and hunting of wild animals should be prevented. The reserves and the protected areas should be developed carefully. The levels of pollutant should be reduced in the environment. Deforestation should be strictly prohibited. Environmental laws should be followed strictly. The useful and endangered species of the plants and animals should be conserved in their natural as well as the artificial habitats. The public awareness should be created regarding the biodiversity conservation and its importance. So that's all, Madam, about the biodiversity conservation. My best wishes for the organizers and best wishes for the World Environmental Day. So all the best. Thank, Thank you, Madam. You Thank so you so much. All. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Madam. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank sir. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your great speech and for being with us. And please, next time, don't interrupt. Wait your time because it is very kindless for all of us to wait. Now, I'm calling Dr. Sujata Singhi from India. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sujata. Enlighten us, please. Thank you so much, uh, India Inter International Internship University founder and all of you, dear speakers. And I must say the host, Nada and Virginia, who have been taking up this particular thing about bringing about the most important aspect the advocacy of environment. Today, we are all advocates here who are talking about how we can see that the earth lives on. Well, pause. Have you ever taken a break to observe communicate, connect, give gratitude to nature? Well, I think it's time to nurture nature and get nurtured. As an advocate of environment and go green, I would say I will not rest my case today. I take this case forward and I want each and every being who is borrowing from nature to give back their rightful share. Often we see that we take it for granted, we feel privileged that just because we are born on this planet, we have a right over each and everything around us. But is that the truth? We are here just on a rental basis. We are not here forever. And we need to give back the right to rent so that the future generation play tells that we have been good borrowers and not looters. Yes, I would use the word looters because today man has become so unkind, so discompassionate, and so very greedy that he has forgotten what he is taking and what he needs to give back. There is something called as a system. The whole of this planet environment has a system on which it works. However, unfortunately, we have made this system into an arrangement, an arrangement of convenience. We take what we need, what gives us momentary happiness, forget what it leaves behind and move on. But is this moving on, leaving behind a trail which is of happiness or is it one of pain. Are the children, the future generation, going to see water flowing in the rivers or are they going to see the water in the bottles and capsules? Are the children going to live on chemical foods or are they going to eat the food which is grown on land? These various questions are something which should be pondering on everybody's heads now. Start them young. It's very important that each and every child understand that living mindfully is the call, is the need and should be the basis of every human life. Because it is rightly said, if bees and insects, they are extinct from earth, all of us are going to perish. But if man gets extinct, all lives on earth, the flora, fauna, and all the beautiful animals, the wild and the bees and the insects are going to thrive. How shameful is that? Man who thinks that he is most powerful, if he goes, the whole world will thrive. So I guess it's time for us to understand that what has been done is done, but now we need to stand up. How can we do that? There are a few pointers which I have always been into by talks and speeches across the world. The first thing, we need to adopt minimalism. Understand that less is more. 
The second is be mindful of the action and how it affects the environment. Gift plants say no to single use plastic. I'm the ambassador for say no to single use plastic globally and we have reached 97 countries. Saying no to single use plastic has saved a lot of sea life also. Say buy local food. Be happy to share and use pre-loved clothes, books, car foods, travels, use public transport. Conscious farming is the third thing, very important. Use less land to grow more, less water to grow more. A lot of research is being done on this, and I guess it's time that we make it sustainable so that the whole world is allowed to use this particular patency of intelligence with regards to farming. Stop overfishing which disrupts the ocean ecological balance. The fifth point, reduce carbon footprints through conscious consumption and disposal. Plant trees and do seed bombing wherever possible. Again, a system to penalize defaulters of waste management, fossil fuel emissions, food wastage, air polluting items, illegal taxidermy activities, unnatural animal husbandry are some of the things which needs to be penalized for so that there is a control there. And also we need to know that man understands that too, if we do not handle this crisis now, we will become extinct and all lives on earth will thrive. Thank you so much. And I do not rest my case here. From here on, we move forward to make a happier world. Let's together save environment. Happy World Environment Day to all of you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Dr. Sujata. I want to say that I really loved how you started gratitude for nature and giving back and not, not taking for granted. But what I love the most was let's be good borrowers and not be terrible losers. I think that we need to continue to do that. Thank you again for your Thank great you. speech. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. It was really great. Thank you. We are honored to have you with us today. Now, we are calling an amazing woman, lady, strong woman, great educator, great leader, great entrepreneurship, our Professor Rachana Chakraborty. Welcome. Thank you so much, Nana Ma'am. Uh, that was a great uh, encouragement to start the speech today. First of all, I would like to or wish everyone a World Environment Day. This day has been set aside to remind us all about the importance of our environment. So it is amazing that IIU has selected this day to be celebrated with so many intellectuals and so many green ambassadors here across the globe who uh, is just trying to spread the awareness that it's high time that we all spread this voice over about protecting and saving our environment. Especially, I just want to start with this American proverb which says, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. And the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that somebody else will save it. So please do not do that because that's the greatest thing which we all have been doing. And is it only one day we need to spread the awareness? Every day we need to make it as an awareness, as a gratitude to what we are getting from the universe, the plants. This is the way in which we can give it back. We need to understand that today what we are inhaling is because of the plants. So people celebrated in many ways by planting trees, by cleaning up roads and a lot of new technologies. So let us not talk about the harm we have already done, but what we can do, the things to make it better. We all can help as individuals, as community, as a school. So it is basically a group work wherein we all can work for the world environment. It is time for everyone to step up together. And it's a duty that we should all make it a situation where we will not regret. Reduce. We have to just reduce the carbon footprint by using less energy, driving less, eating less meat, the non-vegetarian, the red meat, 
recycle, compost to reduce waste. No one is telling you to leave it, but at least reduce it. Conserve the water by taking few showers at, and uh, of course, take care that there are no leakage in your taps. We need to find out. Sometimes we just take it very lightly because water is not a problem for many people living in the cities. But just go to the villages, how much they are struggling for just a single sip of water. So we need to understand our responsibilities. If each one of us do the simple things, we can save and protect our environment. Throwing away the seeds which we take, why don't we donate it and give it to the nearest municipal organization, which I do with my own organization. We collect the seeds and give it to the municipality so that they can grow it into the greener world. It's not possible for all of us to make the world green because we live in flats, wherein the area for making a green world is little difficult, though not impossible. We can plant any number of trees in our area also because we need to grow our own oxygen. Otherwise, we are not liable to inhale the oxygen. These are just simple things which we all know, but we don't do it. Therefore, the sustainable business that makes this environment a priority, these small acts, small, small acts, is going to make a big difference and building a better future for our planet. So we need that to stop the deforestation. Forests are very important because they provide us with oxygen. They help us to regulate the climate and are also the home to many animals. When we cut down the forests, it contributes to climate change and of course the loss of animal habitats. My earlier uh, delegates have already spoken a lot about how we can give our back our gratitude to the universe with the help of the three R's. All the uh, important speakers, global speakers have spoken about the three R's, which is now a necessity. If not now, then when? The question remains all with us. So we are facing the climate change when the harmful gases are released into the air. They are trapping the heat and increasing the Earth's temperature. It is already making the significant changes to our beautiful environment, and we will continue to do so in the future if this awareness is not made, implied today, right now. So every day when we are spreading this awareness, let more and more people be added into this run, this awareness drive, so that we can make a deep, deep impact into the green world. Green is the color which we should all keep on enjoying and respecting. Let us all go green and keep it clean. So the small steps make very big impact as already um, our earlier speakers have spoken about uh, the green world, how we can plant and make it green. So we need, nature is our treasure. So let's preserve it. And we all need that the Earth Day is the best day and make it the best to protect our planet. So lastly, I would like to end by just saying, because already my valuable guests have spoken a lot, uh, coming towards the end is there is a facility where we can just uh, give a prelude to my earlier uh, esteemed speakers who have spoken a lot elaborately about environment and what we can do as educators in the grassroots level also. There are many things which we can do, which is very important. Just go to your washroom and see that the taps are closed. If we do not waste, we can save our environment. So lastly, I want to say the best time to plant a tree was not 20 years ago. It is now today. Go out, start planting a small plant, a small tree. So it is the second best time is right now. So thank you so much, Nada Ma'am and IIU for giving me this platform and speaking about my favorite topic on the World Environment Day. Thank you so much, Virginia, ma'am. 
you have been doing amazing work both of you thank you thank you thank you so much professor roshana i think i really love the fact that you brought working in groups your school your job your community i think that is really going to be very impactful if we start thinking that way thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you Rob. yes thank you thank you so much professor rachana wonderful and we really enjoy always listening to you and giving your great solution thank you uh moving still in india i want to call now uh, we have uh, respected Mahmoud Kadri from India. Welcome. Enlighten us. Respected Mahmoud. Respected Mahmoud. Uh, please unmute yourself, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. We don't hear you. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, now it's great. Welcome. So thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nada. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and fellow nature enthusiasts. Today we are celebrating World Environment Day. And I want to be very positive about this. Yes, people uh, do present a gloomy picture. But for me, nature is so vast, it can take care of itself only if we stop interfering with nature. So if we want to interfere with nature, what we have to be doing is be responsible. And what can I do? So I have listed out some uh, points, which I will very quickly cover and at my speed. First is conserve water. Fix leaf taps, use half tap, collect rainwater, do rainwater harvesting, and use water efficient appliances. Next, conscious consumption. Choose eco-friendly products, reduce single use plastic and support local and organic produce. This is all that a person within age group six years to 100 years can do. Next, energy efficiency. Use energy saving lighting. Turn off devices when they are not in use and utilize natural light and ventilation. In Wilson College Nature Club, as alumni, we changed the entire fittings of the college and we did a saving of more than 400,000 rupees per month in electricity bills. Next, promote sustainable transport, walk, cycle, or use public transport as much as possible carpool, sharing rides, and of course, considering changing your vehicle to EMV or hybrid. Then of course, practice the seven hours of waste management. That is reuse, recycle, sometimes refuse, repair, rethink, and also repeat this. Proper disposal, recyclable materials, and of course, compose of organic waste. We can do it at home. Planting trees. Now we have the experience of over 30 years of planting trees. And we find that only 1% survive because that there's a lot of uh, factors that affect the plant. So plant the trees, but adopt them. Next is, we encourage all our uh, friends and families to collect the fruit seeds which you eat at home, put them in a can, and whenever you travel, just throw it across the countryside where you're traveling by train, or if you stop your car and you throw it, the seed will sprout, and God knows who will eat the fruits of your plantation. And of course, support conservation organization. Educate and inspire others like what IIU is doing, spread awareness, discuss nature in WhatsApp group. There are many WhatsApp groups, but very little discussion on nature, and of course, lead by example. Engage in community initiatives, participate in cleanup drives, support conservation organizations like the Bombay Naturalistic Society, the World Wildlife Fund, the Ministry, and a lot of 
NGOs that do conservation work. And of course, all this has to start today with some initiative. So let's have a nature connection. Let's spend time outdoors, appreciate nature's beauty, and instill love <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> for the environment for future generations. And let us become stewards of the earth. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I think I really enjoyed so much of <coughs> not only three hours, but at six hours. You know, so, and I think a very important one is refuse, you know, when it's not the right thing to do and also repeat. So thank you for adding that to everybody else's conversation and your steps also to follow their easy is what we do every day. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, our great, uh, respected Mahmoud. It was really amazing. So many new solutions to do. And that is why we are here today on this great IIU stage to share our, our great solutions, our actions, what we need to do to protect our environment. Now, moving forward, uh, let us invite uh, uh, respected Faiz Ayat Ansari from India. You are welcome, respected Faiz. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope I am uh, audible. Yes, you are. Great, great. I'm so sorry for my background. There's a power failure over here. So I, I'll just quickly uh, introduce myself. I'm Faiz Ayat Ansari. Uh, I'm an assistant professor of senior scale at uh, KIT School of Law, uh, KIT uh, Institution of Eminence, Bhuvaneswar, as well as a research scholar at uh, National Law School, Bangalore. Uh, I'm also a researcher and collaborator at the Mediterranean International Center for Human Rights Research at Italy. So uh, basically, that uh, I congratulate, first of all, IIU for uh, coming up with this wonderful idea. Uh, of uh, uh, a conference of this magnitude to talk about environment and environmental uh, issues across the globe. Uh, since uh, I am a person who is more into law and governance, uh, so I'll be speaking on an interesting topic that is uh, environmental federalism in India. Uh, this is more related to the governance, this is more related to which uh, owes more sort of responsibility as concerned, and therefore we can uh, plan a roadmap. Uh, it, it means that there are basically more than one forms of governments. Uh, sometimes there's a union government or a central government or a federal government, which we call in the US, and the state governments. As far as the federal polity goes, there is decentralization, there is distribution of powers. So the, when we talk about uh, the Indian context, uh, both the union government and the state governments are by and large empowered to legislate on environmental matters. However, historically speaking, when we talk about the British era, uh, it was more uh, a, a top-down strategy. It was more a union-focused uh, strategy. It was more a center-focused strategy, whereby the union government used to carry out most of the legislations and powers as far as uh, environment protection is concerned. The, the Forest Act is a prime example of that. Uh, but of late, uh, in the last few years or so, in the last few decades or so, actually, we have seen that uh, the uh, concurrent which forms a part of Schedule 7 uh, of the Constitution of India, uh, that, that by and large and the state government to legislate on matters related to environment. And we can see that more and more in the last few years or so, the state governments are getting more and more involved in the matters of environmental protection because of policy.
possibility of time. I won't we have some problems. We don't Mr. Pyle, we don't understand you. And is giving everyone a, a sort of a broad overview of how federalism in the I think we lost him. Yes, we lost him. He lost the connection. So if he join again, we will call him. I didn't understand nothing. Uh, moving forward, moving forward now, uh, let us call a respected Dr. Alka Suri from India. Welcome Dr. Alka. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, Namaskar to everyone because we are in different time zones. Yes, so Namaskar yes, will be we most are. appropriate. And uh, let me thank uh, IIU for calling me as a speaker. Uh, my theme, uh, I'm here to speak uh, very differently, although on environment, but a very different approach. Uh, I, I will be telling you something about yogic philosophy. You know, yoga is uh, ancient art of India. So how in environment degradation can be saved through yoga? So nature has, uh, you know, been a means of life for uh, mankind since the beginning of time. It provides clean air, water, vegetation, minerals that are essential for living. Today, the same nature environment are in danger. It is being over-exploited in the race to earn money and in the name of development. The art of living is completely forgotten amidst greed and progress. Uh, Ashtang Ruyog, there are Ashtang Yog is an ancient practice that provides movement, breathing techniques, and meditation to promote mental and physical well-being. It's a way of life and contains the solution to all the problems of the world. There are eight limbs of uh, yoga, which are yam. Yam is moral, moral code or ethics in social living. Please bear with me. I will connect the dots in the end. So, and niyam, niyam is self-discipline. Asan, asans are postures or uh, uh, yoga which we do for the body. Pranayam is the breath control, how we control our breathing. We hold the breath, we take deep breaths and we keep uh, breathing. And then pratyahara, it is sense withdrawal or non-attachment in life. Then dharna, dharna is concentration on certain point, certain thing. Dhyan is meditation. And samadhi, samadhi means oneness with oneself. See, yam and niyam build the foundation of right behavior through such values like non-violence and truthfulness. Such practices as cleanliness and contentment. Asans, they make our body strong and flexible. Pranayam develops our vital energy. Yoga has an inner dimension, meditation, which is the development of higher consciousness. The focus of dharna, dhyan, and samadhi is the real purpose of yoga, which together forms a single process of sayam or meditation in the broadest sense. Our environment can be transformed if we implement only the first two limbs of Ashtang Yoga, that is Yam and Niyam, into our daily lives. What are Yams? Yams are, there are five Yams. Ahinsa, which is non-violence. Satya, truthfulness. Asatya, non-stealing. 
ब्रह्मचार्य कंजर्वेशन ऑफ वाइटल एनर्जी अप्रिग्रह नॉन होर्डिंग द नियम्स आर शॉर्ट विच इज क्लीनलीनेस ऑफ बॉडी एंड माइंड संतोष कंटेंटमेंट तप विच इज डिसिप्लिन स्वाध्याय इज सेल्फ एग्जामिनेशन एंड देन सेल्फ इंप्रूवमेंट यू कैन कीप अ जर्नल इन द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड पीपल आर वेरी फॉन्ड ऑफ जर्नलिंग इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ जर्नलिंग सेल्फ जर्नलिंग एंड देन ईश्वर परिधान दैट मीन्स इफ नथिंग वर्क सरेंडर टू द डिवाइन सो द सोल्यूशन टू द एनवायरमेंटल प्रॉब्लम लाइज इन प्रैक्टिसिंग अप्रिग्रह संतोष एंड प्रतिहार साधना हाउ अप्रिग्रह इज अ वर्चू of non possessiveness non aggressive non grasping non greediness it is the fifth yam of the yogic philosophy and it is a concept in which possessions should include only what is necessary at a particular stage in one's life one of the speaker emphasized on i think it was dr sujata on minimal uh, minimalism and it is something of that kind that we should not uh, hoard things we should keep only what is in use and whatever we have in uh, excess we should share it with other people so santosh is contentment practice of self contentment at all times we should recognize that our happiness should not be dependent on external circumstances but true joys that comes from within and never changes so always keep a sense of gratitude and contentment this does not mean that we should be complacent and uh, every moment is an opportunity to learn grow and advance in the path of yoga and lastly but not least pratihara sadhana which Uh, of the fifth limb of ashtanga yoga it is uh, it has two fold benefits it involves withdrawal from wrong food wrong impressions wrong associations while simultaneously opening to right food right impressions and right associations today over exploitation of the environment sedentary lifestyles surrounded by concrete jungles and unhealthy consumption of food has given rise to evils like climate change water shortage pollution food shortage injustice poverty Ill illiteracy and violence the self created environment of ours has become the root cause of uh, diminishing our very existence and cannot escape the present lifestyle although a new ray of hope can culminate through yoga if we imbibe ashtang yoga in life we can get solution to all our uh, all problems like environmental pollution pollution terrorism prevalent in the world no matter which country we come from but by adopting a simple lifestyle of a yogi we can preserve our planet our rivers and the earth i call upon everyone to practice and apply the yoga in environmental protection and contribute to building a clean healthy and greener thank you thank you so much dr alka i have to say that yoga provides the tools that's what we learn from you to properly explore and direct our body our mind our breath as well as we connect to the environment so this is so so important many times people don't think that but this is very very clear thank you so much for letting us know and sharing that incredible speech with us today thank you Yes, it was great, Dr. Alka. It was not like uh, other speeches, different with the yoga, and we learned that today. And really, really thankful. Thank you so much. It was really amazing. You're welcome, ma'am. Now uh, we are still in India. We are calling our great Dr. Punam Gotti. You are welcome, Dr. Punam. Enlighten us with your message, with your solution, action. Please open your camera, Dr. Punam. Thank you. Yeah. Very good evening to all of you. Thank you so much, Nara. And uh, Piyush sir and Snigdha ma'am, 
giving me chance to present my view in front of you all the topic is very interesting nature nature for sustainable future but first we all know about the environment the term environment refers to all the ecological unit that are naturally present on the earth in the form of land water air soil forest sunlight minerals living organism it extra this earth is full of natural surrounding some are organic and some are a biotic biotic elements are those elements which contain life like humans birds animals plant and microorganism whereas a biotic elements are those which do not have any life like air sunlight water land soil minerals it extra apart from this it is divided into four different regions biosphere lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere in which the hydrosphere is the largest part on the earth life on earth has become possible due to creation types of action and reaction between different types of resources present in the environment all regions contain some natural resources in their range atmosphere like air and sunlight or weather the atmosphere the soil or lilies region of the earth we can also say that the crust and upper cover of the earth is like the land biosphere is the area or range of the earth where life exists in the form of plants animals bird and human beings hydrosphere largest part of the earth surface about 75% of water is found in the form of ocean at present the condition of the environment is so pathetic that our for father could never even image we have exploited our environment endlessly by using our resources in a very wrong way we can see that pollution is increasing repeatedly every day and everywhere on earth whether it is pollution of air land water or soil deforestation acid rain and other dangerous disaster created by human beings through technologic process the element of impurity has been involved in every era of environment the increasing number of factories industries vehicles or other transportation has worsened the condition of air pollution all over the world at present the situation has become so bad that the intergovernmental panel on climate change which is a scientific and inter international body under the united nations the use of natural resources should be carefully planned and implemented in order to provide a better and healthier life to our future generations we all should unit and take some revolution regarding the prevention of our environment with less and safe use of natural resources thus the right quota is the earth does not belong to us we belong to the earth some poem can i speak in hindi you all understand in hindi no ponam we don't understand hindi no no listen you already give us so much uh, so no we don't understand so let us let us move okay okay thank no issue thank you so much for giving me opportunity who will not give you dear dr punam a uh, opportunity you are a uh, awesome and amazing thank you thank you thank so much thank you so much nada thank you ma'am thank you and you are always welcome
moving forward, we are going now from India to the United Arabian Emirates. We have a wonderful educator who is coming from United um, Arabian Emirates. She is our well-known Chandani Kinger. Welcome, dear and respected Chandani. Enlighten us, please, with your great speech. Thank you so much, Professor Nanda, and good. It's always a pleasure to be here again at the platform platform of IAU, and it's again a good day for all of us that we all are here working together for the entire society, not for the individuals. So definitely, but I would just take this uh, the discussion to some uh, specific scenario where I would like to talk about, or I would like to point pinpoint about that we all are talking about the future generations, but what exactly the future generation is doing as of now. That is a question that I was wondering when I was looking into the research and when I was looking into this topic. So are our recent future generations ready to accept or work on saving their own planet? So let's have some idea or get some uh, into the projections and all that, how the, the power of the youth-led innovations can take the entire society and develop or, or make this world a better place to live. So with this, I want to like to start with that in the world where we, we often feel that it's very small, but actually our small, small steps that are the one which will hold the power to create a momental changes. So definitely our youth, our adults, our educators, our entire society plays a vital role when we are talking on the uh, on this momentous occasion of the World Environment Day. I I am really, really uh, want to emphasize this rule that each one of us over here and my esteemed speakers before this also, I've already spoke about this, that each one of us plays a very important role in unleashing the power of the, the development or the, or the saving of the world uh, and the nature or the environment that we are living in. And when we talk about the youth, when we talk about the future generations, they, they are not just only the future generations, but I would say it as they are our sustainable future generations we have to think about coming together as a united and as a whole inclusive society that we can address that how our pressing environmental challenges are away uh, are visible enough and how we are going to achieve them and we all have the edges sdgs in front of us so how we are going to achieve all of that together so the message uh, that i can pass on to the youth as of now that you are the driving force behind the change we all are talking about future generations we all are talking about making the world a better place for our future generations but you are the one who is the driving force behind every change that we are making now and bringing the fresh perspectives to each of the things that we are doing now recently i had us uh, uh, the same uh, celebration happening in my school on friday before we ended up for the uh, for the weekend and the students have came up with an amazing ideas even for us teachers also it was very surprising to see that how beautifully this generation or the youth that we are talking about these kids are, are are of the age who are not even adults yet or who are just in the in the in the teens so i can imagine that what is the the uh, the excitement that they have and rather than excitement i would say to how responsible the future generation is that they are bringing some fresh perspectives they have the boundless energy and the determination to shape a better world so when they were showing this uh, the presentation when they were mimicking uh the small act and the act was also awesome in a way that they have presented the environment with a a comedy. So I think everyone sitting over here and especially the educators can actually relate that how we can protect the environment even by making it in a bit lighter way also. Right. So we, we say that this youth has a passion. They have the creativity. They have the innovation ideas. They can hold the immense potential actually to drive the progress towards the SDGs. So we all have to embrace your role. We as an adults definitely have to embrace your rules as in change agents. We have to give you the platform to change the world for the future perspective now channelizing your talents like channelizing the talents of the youths towards finding the sustainable solutions and then inspiring the inspiring the others also through their actions we see some of the kids say very small small things which actually keeps the adult thinking about 
So definitely this is the future generation that we are talking about. Now, as an educator, if I don't say that what will be my role or what will be the role of my uh, uh, the whole community of the educators, then definitely that's not uh, a fair opportunity that we are talking about. So when we talk about the educators, we also have a unique opportunity to shape the future minds or the future generations. We have to embrace that this people, this youth who is coming up, this tins who are turning into the adults, this tins who are going to be the future youth, they are the catalysts for the change by incorporating the sustainability and the innovation into their curriculum. So definitely we as an educator have to fo foster our learning environment that encourages them towards the three, uh, critical thinking, towards the problem solving and towards the criti uh, creativity. So we have to, as an educator, I believe that, and I, I account it into my responsibility that I have to equip my students with that knowledge and the skills that, that are necessary for them to address the environmental challenges and drive the sustainable development. So if as an educator, if I take this responsibility, definitely my young generations who is growing up, we say our future generations which is growing up, is also going to take their own roles and responsibilities. And coming towards the uh, conclusion, as a society, we cannot forget that we belong to the society. We all must recognize that we all have to take a collective actions into the paramount in achieving our goals. So definitely each one of us sitting here, watching here, uh, talking here, but this actually has to be taken into the real actions rather than just a discussions and kept on the papers and just making the laws regarding that. By encouraging it in our dialogues, by fostering our collaborations, and definitely by providing the resources and support to our young generation. And we create an enabling environment for our youth who is going to lead the innovations and they are going to flourish like anything. Mm -hmm. Believe me, teachers, believe me uh, that they have the power to do so. And let us all break down their barriers, promote this inclusivity and celebrate the diversity in our pursuit of a sustainable future. To conclude, I will just say a single line. Let us embrace the strength of our collective small steps blustered by the ingen ingenuity of youth and supported by the guidance of the adults and the educators to wave a, tap a, a tapestry of hope, resilience and flourishing the planet for the generations yet to come. And that's where I think we all are responsible to support each other and bring the society to where we want to live. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shandani, I think that you hit the nail on the head. It's everybody's responsibility, but it's something that I really loved is that our children and our youth are not the future, they're the present. So I'm so glad that you're activating that. Thank you so much. Yes, our great Chandani. We are so proud on our great Chandani and her work like an educator and spreading her knowledge all around the globe. Thank you. Thank you so much for your great work. Now, still in the United Arabian Emirates. Uh, now we have uh, our great Shiza Fatima Sidikul. Welcome, dear and respected Shiza. Enlighten us with your message. Thank you, ma'am. The greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Greetings to one and all. I am Shiza Fatima and I am an active member of IIU. I countlessly work for the environment. I would like to thank the IIU team and Nada Ma'am for giving us this opportunity to share our views on World Environment Day. World Environment Day is very important day in our lives. It is the day when we get aware of issues related to our environment and pledge to keep it safe for our better future. We should take care of our environment. It can only be done when we will keep our eyes open and be active to bring some positive changes within ourselves and the environment. We should make people aware about this issue so that they can be the active agents of this campaign in the future. 
The condition of our healthy environment is getting declined day by day. Just because of deforestation, global warming, pollution, etc., it affects the health of living beings and environment very badly. My dear friends, this event is celebrated globally in more than 100 countries because this issue cannot be solved individually by one country. It is a global issue and needs to be solved globally by the involvement of all the countries worldwide. The host city of this campaign in 2016 was Angola. First time it was celebrated in 1973 with the theme Only One Earth. The theme for World Environment Day 2023 is Solutions to Plastic Pollution. We all are the members of a family and live in one home under one roof, that is the earth and the environment. We should take care of both because our life will be healthy and safe only when the earth will be green and environment will be clean. Happy World Environment Day. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Jesus, so, so much. I love the fact that you said that we're all active change makers. It's in our hands and I really, really love that. And that this is not just our issue, it's a global issue. So as a global citizen, we all have to contribute. Thank you so much. Absolutely perfectly done. Thank yes. you. Yes. Great, she's so wonderful. Let us move to Georgia. Let us move to Georgia. Let us give a big smile there, David. Big smile, David Quaraxuela. Welcome. I know we are tired, but let us continue. We have more, more, more today and tomorrow. So welcome there, David. And Hello. you know, Can I share this don't screen? be sad. I know you want to share a screen. I will try to give you the options, but my network is not good. So let us see. Will I, could I do that? It's only for you, you know. I will try. Thank you. Make him a host. You can make him a host and then he'll be able to share. Yes, yes, yes. But I have problems with uh, my network. Oh, so let, yeah, David, you can. Okay, now I will share. One minute. Hello once again. God, Today I will present project about uh, World Environmental Day, and I will speak about climate, World Environmental Day, and also sustainable development goal. Let's start, but before I will introduce okay, myself. David, David, please can you put a full screen? Click on enable editing and put a full screen, please. Daddy, the dog. Ah, mara. Internet han arsebuli problem ebi. Nakhe in blue is so that's area. I can ask any chance. Ah, ki chance mara gadi de. Enable editing, smet si David. Enable. Now you can click. Now you can click. Oh, great. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Edgar Tchalia. I'm from Georgia. I'm studying in the Chinese number first public school at ninth grade. My English teacher is Zolda Danielia. Now let's start speaking on first chapter, which calls climate. Meaning of climate. 
Climate is a long-term average of temperature, precipitation, and other weather variables at a given location. For example, you can expect snow in the northeast in January, or for it to be hot and humid in the southeast in July. This is climate. The climate record also includes extreme wall with such as record high temperatures or record amounts of rainfall. Meaning of climate change. Climate change is a change in the usual weather found in a place. This could be a change in how much rain a place usually gets in a year, or it could be a change in a place's usual temperature for a month or season. Climate change is also a change in Earth climate. This could be a change in Earth usual temperature. Causes of climate change. Burning foliage forests, cutting down forests, and farming livestock are increasingly influencing the climate and the Earth's temperature. This has enormous amounts of greenhouse gases to those naturally occurring in the atmosphere, increasing the greenhouse effect and global warming. Problems caused from climate change. Global warming. Global warming describes the current rise in the average temperature of Earth's air and oceans. Global warming is often described as the most recent example of climate change. Also, global warming is a long-term heating of Earth's surface observed since the pre-industrial period between 1850 and 90 due to human activities, primarily fossil fuel burning, which increases heat trapping greenhouse gas levels in Earth's atmosphere. Greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is the way in which it is trapped close to the Earth's surface by greenhouse gases. These heat trapping gases can be thought of as a blanket wrapping around Earth, keeping the plant closer than it would be without them. How to stop same problems? I will show 10 ways which helps us to problem same problems. First, change your light. Second, dry less. Third, recycle more. Check your tires. Use less hot water. Plant a tree. Turn off electronic day wastes. Save more energy. Eat less meat and avoid product with a little package. Chapter 2 calls WED, which is abbreviation of World Environmental Day. World Environmental Day. World Environmental Day is celebrated annually on 5 June and encourages awareness and action for the protection of the environment. It is supported by many non-governmental organizations, businesses, government and types, and represents the primary United Nations Outreach Day supporting the environment. History of the WED. World Environmental Day was established in 1972 by the United Nations at the Stockholm Conference on the Human Environment, 5 to 6 June 1972, that had resulted from discussions on the integration of human interactions and the environment. One year later, in 1973, the first WED was with the theme Only One Earth. Chapter 3 calls SDG, which is aberration of sustainable development goal. SDG 13. Sustainable Development Goal 30 is to limit and adapt to climate change. This is one of 70 Sustainable Development Goals established by the United Nations General Assembly in 2050. The official mission statement of this goal is to take urgent action to combat climate and, uh, change and its impact. SDG 30 and SDG 7 on clean energy are closely related and complementary. Sustainable Development Goal 13. Target. SDG 13 has five targets which are to be achieved by 2030. They cover a wide range of issues surrounding climate action. The first three targets are outcome targets. Strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related disasters. Integrate climate change measures into policies and planning. Build knowledge and capacity to meet climate change. The remaining two targets are means of implementation targets. To implement the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, and the promote mechanism to raise capacity for planning and management. Along with each target, there are indicators that provide a method to review the overall progress of each target. The UNFCCC is the primary international intergovernmental forum for negotiating the global response to climate change. Now that we have learned to fly the air like birds, swim on the water like fish, look one thing, to learn to live on Earth as human beings. George Bernard Show, and thanks for attention. Wow, thank you so much, David. I think you really laid it all out for anybody who had any type of doubt. They know what we're celebrating today, why we're doing it, and why we're uniting as a global citizenship. So thank you again for a marvelous job. Thank you, thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you also to you, to IIU for the great opportunity. Thank you also, uh, Dr. Renata and uh, your team. Thank you again. Thank you. In, uh, your mic.
you're mute you're yeah. muted oh, there you go yes thank you thank you so much there david it was really amazing keep doing yeah. a great work a big clap for you and for georgia students wonderful and now let us move to a georgian english teacher let us see what will she share with us her options and her solutions welcome there respected professor maka sikuradze enlighten us hello 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 everyone i am so happy and honored to be with you to be part of such an incredible event thank you for this opportunity that I celebrate this amazing day, uh, very outstanding and important speakers and important people. Thank you very much. Uh, I start, Earth is a unique planet because it uh, has a variety of life forms to care for and it's this biodiversity that sets in apart from many lifeless planets and lets us nurture nature to have a nurturing future meaning that generations in the future will have the same access that we do to the resources of the Earth. Sustainable development focuses on both the short-term and long-term impacts of environmental management decisions and what is the importance of nurturing nature. We have a symbiotic relationship with nature. We benefit from it and we in turn, we need to take care of it. And we see this clearly with animals and we should also work to protect our green environment. And however, the faster the pace of human progress, the greater the threat to the planet. Many species of living creatures are on the verge of extinction and some species have already become extinct. The area of tropical forest is decreasing day by day. The climate of the planet is changing due to the increasing release of greenhouse gases. The rate of soil degradation is also accelerating due to which hunger across the planet may become an even bigger problem. And World Environment Day 2023 20, uh, will focus on beating plastic pollution and will spotlight solutions to plastic pollution. And plastics are polluting our planet and choking our ocean, harming human health and damaging ecosystems vital to our livelihoods. The UN Environment Program is rising. They alarm on the severity of global plastic crisis and highlighting the networks of everyday people coastal workers and communities who are spearheading solutions to beat plastic pollution. And how is plastic harmful to the forest? Plastic pollution is a devastating to wildlife because it does not simply disappear. And therefore, there is no alternative to sustainable development because if we don't take care of the earth and use its resources rationally, the existence of humanity will be questioned. Uh, and uh, uh, take care of the earth and she will take care of you. I am not an environmentalist and I am earth warrior. Every year on June 5, World Environment Day is celebrating the goal of which is to increase public awareness and involve them uh, actions aimed at protecting the environment. That is why, first of all, we humanity should take care of our environment and remember it well. Waste not the smallest thing created. Four grains of sand make mountains and atomic infinity and it's our duty to take care of our healthy environment let us give our coming generation a healthier and happier environment to have a beautiful life best wishes on world environment day and let us stop harming harming the nature let us stop polluting it let us join hand to bring a positive change to make planet earth and much healthier greener and happier place to live Thank you very much for your great attention. Thank you uh, very much, my great motivator, Dr. Inga Hachilawa. Thank you, my great supporter, Dr. Nada Radkovic. Thank you, mm -hmm. our great moderator, uh, Dr. Virginia. Thank you, all speakers. You are amazing and very important people. Good luck, all participants. Today, Thank our, you so today, amazing day. Good luck to all. Thank you, Maka. Thank you so much. I want to say that you said something very important. Symbiotic relationships. Usually those are prolonged relationships that need each other and they can be mutual 
and both benefit, or there could be one that benefits and one that is harmed. We need to make sure that our symbiotic relationship is that it's mutual for all of us. So thank you so much for mentioning thank that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, and our Maka says she's not an environmentalist, but you are. You are fighting every day and so many actions and yes. so many sustainable development actions. So you are there, Maka. Now, still in Georgia, let us hear the voice of the youth. We have an amazing girl, an amazing youth, an amazing student, Ambassador Elena Shalamberze. And yes, she has to be, she has a person from her. She is learning whole time. So welcome, dear, great Elena. Enlighten us. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have a presentation too for this day. I share now. Can you see? There. Now we can. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Elna Schoenbergze. I'm grateful and I'm very happy to be with you and have the opportunity to celebrate this important event with you. Thank you so much, Mr. Piyush Pandit, for this opportunity. Uh, my great respect to you. Thank you very much, Professor Nada, Professor Snitka, and uh, Virginia, uh, and uh, all of you IIT. Okay. Uh, Earth is our home and we all have a responsibility to protect our home. Otherwise, our life and health we will, will be in danger. We often only care about our own well-being and do not thinking about the outcome. Good, uh, good God has given us a great gift, the ability to think, and therefore has given us a great responsibility. It is a pity that is in many cases. It is difficult for us to fill our own emission, uh, which uh, is manifest by maintaining a harmonious environment. Uh, so protecting the home planet is universal. When we take care of the part of it, we take care of the whole planet. We have been warned for a long time that an uh, uh, irresponsible attitude towards nature can lead humanity to destroy uh, consequences. In the current year, uh, the danger has a become particularly visible, large scale fires in the forest which all to the earth have become more frequent. For example, the Amazon and Australian forests are enough, the water level are rising, the climate has changed significantly. Unfortunately, people often on uh, unknown living uh, cause great damage to the environment. Seeing this problem really hurts my heart and I always try to do something for the good. Therefore, with the aim of raising awareness, I often organize meetings with the elementary school students. I explain to the children that the action of one person cannot make a big difference. Uh, this is a micro caution. Uh, if uh, everyone thinks like that, uh, then nothing will uh, really change. Change should always start with oneself. For example, if another person litters the street and our you don't uh, does the reduce uh, littering. Also, uh, other with, uh, will know uh, your behavior and take advantage uh, of the um, in the future. Do you want to end a future generation to live in a healthy, clean, green environment? And now I want to share with you some of the key issues that I share with the little ones. Uh, reduce meat intake, the mass uh, meat production industry polluted the air, destroys forests and uh, directly uh, affect the climate change. Imagine to feed billions of animals a year, huge forests are destroyed and uh, replaced by a soybean plantation. All this for a person to eat a sausage, burger, 
and um, uh, more food. Uh, don't daily the environment. You have probably seen plastic bottles, polythene bags, perfume bags, and other things that scattered in nature. This is how polluted and various chemical substances get into the soil, uh, which take hundreds of years of processes. As a result, the environment becomes polluted with toxins, which harms our health. Uh, try to avoid thought uh, the away. In uh, general, it is better to use less plastic bags. Uh, use a cloth bags for shopping and you will uh, no longer need to use bags for products. Save water and electricity. Water is the uh, most important resource that we must take care of. Uh, of. Now we should also save electricity because uh, it requires a large amount of uh, water. Saving natural resources is uh, possible to making a small change. Uh, for example, uh, to the tap while brushing your teeth, uh, turn uh, on the washing machine and on the echo mode, uh, use economical lamps by appliances uh, that uh, cause less electricity. Such changes have a positive impact on the environment and on your costs. Uh, reduce air pollution. Anyway, uh, uh, can reduce air pollution. Uh, for this, it is that necessary to take very simple steps. Uh, they to use the car less. Uh, if you don't uh, do not to have a travel and long distance walk uh, or use uh, public transport, take care that your vehicle is technologically correct. Uh, use fill that uh, polluted the environment less. When buying a car, uh, give a prefer uh, preference uh, to herbs and electric cars. Uh, children tell this information at home uh, with their parents. This is also with the results. Save paper. Uh, do not print documents unless necessary. Uh, to produce paper, trees are cut down and forests are destroyed. Forests that are uh, the lands of the earth. Uh, trees not only release oxygen, but also export carbon uh, dioxide and filter the air. Uh, planting the trees is one of the easiest and yet most important things you can do for the environment. In addition, the relationship with nature has a positive effect on your mental health. Establish the tradition of planting trees in the family. Make children fall in love with nature. Teach them that a tree is alive and breathing, uh, that nature also needs care and attention. Everything in the world is incorrected. Uh, don't think that the Australian uh, Bush first or any other similar environmental disaster don't affect you. Uh, if you don't feel the result of such events today, you will uh, definitely uh, feel them tomorrow. Remember that no matter how small your role in shaping out the future may seem, it is actually huge. Okay, uh, change starts with a one person and change start with the first step. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Aline. I really, really loved, especially the fact, I mean, it was great all through, simple steps to make this easy for everybody to accomplish. But I think that one of the powerful words were interconnected. We are all interconnected. We forget that we are all one. And what happens in your country affects my country, even if we're miles away. So thank you. Thank you again for a great presentation. Thank you so much. Wonderfully done. Thank you, dear Elena. Thank you. It was really wonderful. Now, moving from Georgia, we are going to Turkey. Our great educator, our Nebakat Sankurin, the IAU director of Turkey. Welcome, dear Nebakat. And like yes, us, please. Yes. Yes, greetings from Turkey to all of my friends, uh, IIU teachers and all my friends and all the esteemed speakers. 
Yes, I am Nevahat. I am an ELT teacher from Turkey. And I'm here to give you a speech on World Environment Day. And I am thankful to all of you for giving me this opportunity. As I am a teacher, today I want to mention importance of environmental awareness in schools. Because uh, as teachers, uh, and I attach importance to on this topic, especially on this special day. Environmental awareness in schools is crucial because it only, it not only enhances our students' appreciation for Earth, but also promotes healthy behaviors, inspires our future leaders, and improves the school environment. Schools can promote environmental awareness through curriculum integration, outdoor, outdoor learning in opportunities, waste reduction programs, partnerships with local organizations, and hosting related events and activities. This can ultimately lead to a more environmentally conscious and responsible society, which is crucial for the long-term well-being of both humanity and our planet. Environmental education helps individuals understand and address environmental issues and empowers them to make responsible decisions. Through this process, individuals learn to think critically and creatively about environmental problems and gain the skills and knowledge needed to take action and make a positive impact. As a result, they develop deeper understanding and appreciation of the world of nature and the role they play in it. There are many ways in which education on environmental awareness can empower, empower our societies. For example, it helps our students understand how the environment works and how human actions can impact the environment. It encourages our students to become more aware of the impacts they have on the environment and fosters an understanding of our planet. It helps our students develop critical thinking and problem solving skills by providing opportunities to explore and learn about the environmental issues. It promotes healthy behaviors and habits, such as conserving resources and reducing waste. It inspires future leaders and encourages students to take actions on environmental issues and work towards solutions. It also improves the school environment by promoting sustainability and reducing waste. Through education, students who learn about sustainable agriculture practices will be able to apply those techniques in their local surroundings. Students who study environmental science can develop innovative technologies or draft policies that contribute to environmental protection. From all this, we can understand that environmental education plays a vital role in promoting environmental awareness and fostering a broader understanding and appreciation of the natural environment. It can help students to develop environment important skills and behaviors that will enable them to be responsible stewards of the environment and contribute to a more sustainable future. Yes. This is my speech, and I attach importance, especially on uh, yes, uh, running projects, especially on environmental uh, issues. For example, thanks to IIU, we started the project. We attended last year's project, Let's Plant the uh, World, and we have attended it. And uh, there are lots of in fact, online projects. I have been attending for three years, especially for three years, climate action projects. And I, since I am an English teacher, I integrate SDGs, especially for environment and climate action in my curriculum. Because in our country, we don't have a curriculum uh, or uh, SDGs are not integrated in our curriculum, but uh, I integrated myself in my curriculum. Thanks for listening to me. Yes, these are my opinions as a teacher. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and thank you for inspiring 
for us students, right? To do the right thing, to follow your, in your footsteps. So thank you for everything you do every day. Thank you for a great speech. Thank you. Thank you for yes, listening to me. Thank you. Many hugs to you from Turkey, to all my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear respected Nebakat, for great speech. We are moving forward. We are going to Tanzania. So let us hear the voice of Tanzania. Respected Ambassador Dr. Konora Karza, CPA, Ms. Shainul Akbar Banji. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Jesse can, Krishna. You, can you open your camera, please? Please allow me not to use the camera as my voice can check. Please allow me because my voice can check. I'm super excited to join over 150 speakers in the two days event organized by the IIU. I'll be focusing my talk on green industrial policy. Although I had prepared my presentation, but it's okay, I'll be just talking. I have 15 years experience in working with the industries, so I'm fairly conversant with the green industrial policy. What is green industrial policy? It is a strategic government policy that attempts to accelerate the development and growth of green industries to transition towards a low carbon economy. Why is GIP or green industry policy necessary? GIP being an industrial policy which is meant to trigger and facilitate structural changes to respond to the environmental conditions and also to develop a green circular economy. Natural scientists warn that immediate action must occur to lower greenhouse gas emission and mitigate the effects of climate change. Social scientists argue that the, that the mitigation of climate change requires state intervention and government and governance reforms. Thus, governments must use green industrial policy to address economy, political, and environmental issues of climate change. Green industrial policy is conducive to sustainable economic, institutional, and technological transformation. It goes beyond the free market economic structure to address market failures and commitment problems that they hinder sustainable investments. Effective green industrial policy builds political support for carbon regulation, which is necessary to transition towards a low carbon economy. Green industrial policy also increases political support for further climate policies. Therefore, green industrial policy, GIP, has the potential for environmental benefits. Green technologies, fewer greenhouses gases, and use fewer resources or economies and economize on renewable resources. A majority of natural scientists agree that an enormous reduction in greenhouse gases is essential to mitigate the effects of climate change, such as rise in global temperatures, droughts, floods, extreme weather events, diseases, food shortages, and species extinction. Since green industrial policy can reduce greenhouse gases emissions, it can protect the environment, and in turn, it can prevent the health, safety, and security of humans and other species. Not all green industrial policy are successful in achieving a, a reduction in emissions, but a form of failure is inevitable 
within the policy and economic realms and government learns from failures to improve future policies. Governments in various countries, states, provinces, territories, and cities may use different types of great industrial policy. Distinct policy instruments lead to several outcomes. Examples include sunrise and sunset policies, subsidies, research and development, local content requirements, street in tariffs, tax credits, export restrictions, consumer mandates, green procurement rules, and renewable portfolio standards. In conclusion, immediate action is necessary to address the climate change crisis and protect the environment and green industrial policy offers the tools to do so. Thank you all for listening to me attentively. May Almighty God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shamu. I have to say that involving the private sector and really making them responsible also and letting us know what we can all do um, is very important. I love the fact that we talked about green procurement. That is key. And, and many times we don't really know what that involves, but thank you for bringing that up. Um, it, it, it was great, very enlightening, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Shano. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are really honored to have you with us today. Now, moving from Tanzania, we are going to a uh, land of the pyramids to our great Egypt, uh, beautiful Egypt. And we have a great educator coming from uh, respected Magdi Saleh Shaisley. Welcome, dear Magdi. Thanks, hello. And a my, uh, uh, our the great Magdi is with us from the beginning. So we come to you, you see. Yeah. After a longer time of waiting, uh, I have another scenario because we talk a lot about scientific area of environment day, but uh, I want to say this mother earth who gives us life, this mother earth heartfelt with strife, we love her not the love we should, Hid her death we plot for life on God. She gave us hair, she gave us air, food, and home. That's not enough. With humans scream, with greedy lust, our mouths do form, with evil hopes, our eyes do bleed. Hair, air, we fell with a smoke and death. Ourselves, we care for lack of breath. The sea wants to clean, now choked with west, to drink we fear, with this make host. The soil wants to pure, and the fall of life, now parents' hand of farmers' strife. No longer she can stand our love, now we must flee like a scattered dog. She gave us all onto the end, now we have to rush our lives to defend. So I am here not to talk about pollution and talk about global warming. I am here to say that the sun is shining, the sky is blue, the birds are flying, and the breeze is so cool. Mother Nature is trying her best to give nothing but beautifulness. But what do we do? Make hair a mess. Thanks a lot for having me today. I had a very great presentation, but we waited for a long time. So uh, I know that you are full of the scientific area and the scientific uh, concepts. So uh, this is my another scenario for presentation today. Thanks a lot for uh, having Dear me Magdi, today. you will come to us again, yes, and you can reserve your term and you can make your speech and we will really be happy and honored, you know. Thank you, thank you. 
let us move from Egypt. Let us move from Egypt. Uh, a little walk to uh, Nigeria. Dr. Adelgun, are you available? He's still with us, so. Tatenda in Zimbabwe. Yes, I'm available. Yes, welcome, welcome. Great, uh, respected Tatenda Mapolo from Zimbabwe. Thank you, Professor Nadia. Thank you, Virginia Rivera, and all IIU team who organized uh, such a wonderful program as we are here gathered to discuss on environmental issues. So in representation of IIU, ISDC, in the African Leadership uh, Committee. I will not speak much because from the time that we began, a lot has been said uh, concerning um, in uh, environmental issues and how we can uh, deal with it. But my topic was, to, uh, was on adopting sustainable strategies that can um, best protect our environment and um, a lot has been said, but I just want to pinpoint that there is need for us to refocus, to reshift the literature that is there, the United Nations efforts, the UNFCC and the UNEP. Uh, we need to focus on the, we need to narrow it down to a micro scopic a uh, level whereby us as individuals, us as a, as a global citizens, we take the major role, the first step in protecting our environment because in all literature, in all, in, in representation of the academia and the uh, scholarly works that we have at our institution, um, we need, to, to, to narrow it down to individuals. Yes, policies are there. Uh, we have been told a lot on how we can protect our environment, the challenges that we have. But if we can conscientize that as single units, as individual, I think we'll be able to tackle the global climate or environmental issue as a whole part, because it takes the the small units, the small fractures for us to, 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 by, for us to deal with the, with the global uh, uh, issue uh, as a whole part, as an individual. So I just wanted to pinpoint that, that us as individuals, let us possess a mentality where we are sustainably coexisting with our environment, whether that's Thank you so much. Thank you to the I, IIU team and uh, uh, every speaker that is spoken before is to speak after. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I have to say that the fact that you just said we need to refocus, I think you're absolutely right. And we need to also recommit. But I think your key word here was to have a microscopic approach so we can actually see where we're at and what we're not doing. So thank you so much for that. It was great. Thank you. Short, sweet, and powerful. Thank you. Yes, it was great. It was really great. Uh, let us move. Uh, let us move to South Africa. We have Patricia Nairambi. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity. I'm not sure if I'm audible enough. Yes, you are, but you yeah. have a bad yeah. network and we don't see you. I'm actually sitting at the airport, so I can't switch on my video. Hello. Yes, yes, I think you can give place. your speech. Yes, you can give. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so like I was saying, I think there's someone Sorry. speaking on the, on the background. Yeah, I, we have to mute him. I don't, yes, yes, I'm muted. Yes, he did. 
Thank you. Yes, I, I just wanted to appreciate um, the opportunity to speak um, briefly on waste management and also joining forces with people that are talking about um, managing our environment in alignment with SDG goals. I also want to appreciate the other speakers that have gone ahead of us contributing positively to a common agenda of um, effectively being able to manage our environment well. I, I just want to touch on uh, the waste hierarchy chat um, when we are talking of waste management. Um, the first point would be um, the ways of disposal. Um, as, an, as, an, as a community, as an environment, how do we dispose of um, the waste that is around us? Are we actively in, engaging relevant stakeholders in making sure that we dispose of waste accordingly and in the right manner? Um, and then on the hierarchy, we speak of energy recovery. Is there any way um, when we have managed the waste that is around us, we can be able to recover some form of energy? Um, and we have observed through our cleaning company that um, we have able to dispose of um, waste in our respective environments, glass, plastics, etc. Once it's uh, kind of like uh, divided and put in the right place, we are able to retrieve some, we can be able to recycle some, but also there are also forms of energy that is coming into effect. And then again, touching on that, there are also opportunities for employment um, where we must also, I think, in a way of, um, as, as a social entrepreneur that I am, um, we put incentives to people collecting waste, um, making sure that it's disposed accordingly and then we take advantage of the waste that can be recycled. So that will be the next um, point on my hierarchy chart of waste management. The next thing would be reuse. When we have graded the waste, what can we reuse um, for, for other purposes? For instance, um, I know in Egypt there was um, something that, that, that an SME came up with where they are compressing plastic and then they are using the plastic as, as brick to build buildings that are actually very strong. So once we, have, we are able to then grade the, the waste, we can then be able to see what can we reuse, what can we crush, what can we uh, use as an energy source for our deep environment. And then at the same time, what can we do with the community, the people around us to incentivize and then making sure that people are actively participating in managing the waste um, and creating employment of some sort. Now, the, the fifth one, the minimization. What are we doing to minimize the waste? What are we doing to recycle again or reuse? And then the last one would be presentation. prevention. What are we doing to prevent waste management completely? Um, so I just wanted to contribute that due to time. Um, and once again, thank you for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much, Precious. I think that waste management is probably one of the most important topics, and we definitely need more than two to three minutes to talk about this, but I'm glad that you brought it up because it's something that we definitely need to look into in the future because waste management is probably the key of how we're really going to tackle um, all this with, um, with the environment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, respected Precious. Uh, now, moving from, to Brazil, we have an amazing, respected Dalton Ribeiro from Brazil. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to, greet, to say my gratitude, my thanks to the Nada Hatkovic, uh, Virginia Rivera, and uh, uh, today, uh, I am going to talk about the use of new technologies for monitor landslides on slopes areas in Brazil. We know that uh, climate change intensified from human actions, population growth, and intense industrialization and urbanization are factors 
that are directly related to the occurrence of uh, environment disasters, such as the increase in atmospheric heat temperature and the consequent heat waves, excessive rainfall causing floods and the landslides in hillside areas, rising sea levels and their risks to coastal zones, which are mostly areas of high human density, extreme droughts and water scarcity in some regions of the planet. So it happens that with the advancement of information and the communication technologies and the growth in data analysis, these new tools disseminated have been used in the most diverse social sectors and for all viable purposes, highlighting the use in preservation of the environment, preventing climate change, and monitor possible environmental disasters. Well, I know this is a very short time, hope next time uh, give uh, more uh, topics about uh, this interesting issue. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Nada uh, Rat uh, Ratkovic. I think it's correct. Yes, and very correct. I never hear there's somebody uh, tell my name on the correct way. And you great see the ch, great Ratkovic, wonderful. Yes, I have visited Slovenia once in the past, and the next time will be Croatia. Oh, you are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome, sir. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, we know that. You're welcome. Is, it is a short time, but you have opportunity. Please, you can come to us and give a training session, and we will really like to listen and learn a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Moving from Brazil to, let us go to Mexico, Dr. Elizabeth Islas. Welcome, Dr. Elizabeth Islas. Enlighten us with your speech. Dr. Elizabeth, please unmute yourself. Okay, nothing. Let us move. Elizabeth Islas, please. She's here with us, but no reaction. Dr. Adelgun Josef Keod, respected, welcome. I will, I will speak tomorrow. Professor Dr. Queen, you are welcome. Yes, so I will, I've just joined today to listen to our okay, speakers. My thank time you. is tomorrow. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. So we have them. They don't hear us. So let us try with our Marcela Galar Martinez from Mexico. Welcome. Marcela, welcome. Marcela. Oh, Maria Santiago is there. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear yes. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, uh, good afternoon. Hello, I am Dr. Marcela Galar Martinez, professor and researcher at the National School of Biological Science of the National Polytechnic Institute in Mexico. And for me, it is an honor and a pleasure to participate as a speaker in the celebration of the World Environment Day 2023 at the International Internship University. I would like to give special thanks to Dr. Virginia Rivera for the invitation. And today I want to talk very briefly about how science can help us to change our relationship with ecosystems and promote their restoration. In particular, I am going to talk about the Madin Dam, a small but vital water body in the state of Mexico and where a group of researchers, civil associations and neighbors are fighting for its restoration. The Madin Dam is located in the state of Mexico and is part of a metropolitan area of the Mexico Valley one of the most populated areas in the world with about 20 million people living in it. 
The Medin Dam, together with the Good Somala system, provides both water to 2% of this population. And it is also receiving area for migratory uh, birds and the upper part of the basin is home of the mountain axolotl, an endemic species considered endangered. Uh, what pressures are exerted on this ecosystem as in other basins, in other ecosystems in the world? The main pressures faced by marine include changes in the land use, loss of protected areas, garbage dumping, untreated wastewater discharges, among many others. And all these pressures result in the loss of resources and pollution of all abiotic components of the ecosystems. And what effects has the contamination had on the marine dam? The answer to this question came in 2019. In November of that year, the marine dam suffered an invasion of water lilies that covered practically 100% of the water body. And in August of 2021, more than one and a half tons of fish died to the effects of pollution. And uh, what is happening with contaminants in marine dam? For more than 15 years, our research group have been trying to find out through toxicity studies. These studies try to answer three fundamental questions. What pollutants are there? Do they kill the test organisms? And if they do not die, is it possible that pollutants generate other types of damage? And well, um, uh, what we have found so far is that in the water of marine dam, we found metals such as iron, mercury, and aluminum. Drug type emerging contaminants, including uh, metformin, glyvencamid, and diclofenac. Pesticides like diacinin, persistent organic pollutants such as DDP, bio polychlorinated biphenyls, including anthracene, naphthalene, fluorine, and benzopyrins, and, and microplastics. As to whether these pollutants can kill aquatic organisms, at least until 2021, sentinel species such as, as Daphnia magna were affected, but not the common carp that inhabit the, this reservoir. However, when we conducted some lethal toxicity tests, we found that although the contaminants did not kill the fish, they did produce oxidative stress, damaging lipids, proteins, and genetic material of the exposed juvenile or their organisms, and also genocytotoxicity, embryotoxicity, and teratogenesis in common carp embryos. And now, what is the purpose of all these results? What is the purpose of all this work? Can these results help to restore ecosystem uh, services and conserve the marine dam ecosystem? Toxicology, which is a science that studies toxics and their effects and in which all the work summarizing this thought is framed, aims to remediate ecosystems damaged by toxics, prevent damage by establishing guidelines that let us uh, uh, the, the safe use of chemicals and legislate precisely so that this happens. So the evaluation of the impact of exposure to pollutants on, uh, on human and ecosystem health should lead us to generate strategies to minimize uh, the effects of these toxics. But what are these strategies? Our research group uh, have been working on this uh, for several years now, uh, currently supported by a Conocid project. As part of the project, we are now seeking to establish whether this, uh, 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 there are behavioral changes in the fish in the reservoir, and whether these changes are related to exposure to pollutants. And well, the diagnosis has been made. We know that the reservoir is severely impacted by pollution, that the ecosystem is at risk, and within uh, it, the health of all of us who live there. The next step is to remedy the problem. And the strategy we are following in the project has been divided in two parts. On the one side, we are working on studying and proposing systems to remove pollutants. The proposed strat uh, strategies include the placement of artificial wetlands, floating and subsurface, depending on the site, in the areas that toxicity studies have shown to be the most problematic. This strategy, uh, strategy uh, will help control the amount of pollutants in the dam, since the plants that constitute them serve as filters and can also serve as nesting sites for birds in the reservoir. On the other hand, uh, different types of technology are being studied, bioreactors and advanced ox oxidation techniques, among others, in order to propose treatment plants that remove the pollutants that we, we have found in the reservoir water. The other strategy, which I consider fundamental, is the transmission of, of the acquired knowledge and establishing a link between scientists and the different soil, social actors. On the one hand, the decision makers, the governors at different, different levels, federal, state, and municipal, who are the ones who, uh, through the establishment of public policies and government, uh, governmental programs, can in some way put this knowledge into practice and promote the care of the environment. Another fundamental actor is the general public. 
In our research group, we have provided community talks and workshops to inform the public about uh, these findings and about the way we as citizens uh, can incent and help restore the ecosystem of the marine dam basin. These so actions beyond the water body have an important impact on the entire ecosystem. Let's think about how we manage our waste, how we care for the water in our households, and fundamentally, how we consume and impact our environment. These talks also aim to teach people that they are also responsible for what's happening around them and uh, that they are, have uh, also obligations to fulfill if we want to preserve our environment in the best condition. I want to emphasize that the information summarized in this talk is the work of many years of a team of researchers, professors, and students who have tried to not only to discern what is happening in, the, in terms of contamination in the reservoir, but also to seek its restoration. It is the result of women and men working together to achieve a common goal and dream, and I thank them for the dedication and commitment. Thank you very much for listening to me, and let's nurture the nature for a sustainable future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Marcela. I am so, so proud of the work that you're doing. Um, we really wanted to bring forth this topic because water is key in conservation and living and preserving life on, on Earth. So thank you for all the work that you do and thank you for sharing that. And maybe in the next um, opportunity, you can explain a little bit more, but I know that it's very short time. Thank you again for participating and sharing that. Thank you. Thank you, respected Marcela. Uh, for being here today with us and honoring us. Now we are moving to India. We have our great youth ambassador. So dear ambassador Manat Bankul, enlighten us with your speech. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Nana ma'am. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to one and all. Myself, youth ambassador and international environmentalist Manat Bankul and Nija from India. I'm 10 years old, I'm the youngest speaker champion, certified TEDx speaker, international storyteller and published author. I want to extend my sincere gratitude to, to International Internship University and PUSA for making me part of World Environment Day celebration with the theme, it aim is nurture nature for sustainable future. It's indeed an honor to be among the dignified speakers present here from different zones of the world. World Environment Day is one of the biggest day of recognition for encouraging people worldwide to save and protect our environment from different environmental challenges the world is facing today. It is the biggest annual event in the world run by the United Nations to mark environmental awareness among the people. It is also called People's Day, which is a day to do something to take care of our environment. World Environment Day was first celebrated on 5th June 1974 and year 2023 of World Environment Day is beat plastic pollution. As an environmentalist, I feel we can nurture nature for a sustainable future. By planting trees, this way we can surely have a glorious future and it will be beneficial for our future generation too. Please understand, trees are the poems that the earth writes upon the sky. I firmly believe that he who plants a tree plants a home. The existence of trees is vital for our living. Trees enhance the environment and take care of most of our needs. All forms of life are directly or indirectly dependent upon it. And these woody plants maintain a regular renewal of their growth. I always encourage everyone to participate in plantation drive as the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade we sit so that we can have the best future. Hope everyone present here will agree with me. The trees are the pillars for sustaining life on Earth. They consume carbon dioxide and by photosynthesis emit oxygen. By holding the soil to its roots, it also assists in reducing soil erosion. They also absorb okay. atmospheric okay. carbon and store it in their bones. Uh, yes, 
Oh, no, pero este, yo me voy a mi cuarto cuando me toque hablar. Yeah, hermana, please unmute yourself. I muted all. Continue, Manat. Thank you. Manat, you can continue. Okay. Um, they also absorb atmospheric carbon and store it in their wood and bark, thus slowing the rate of global warming. Not only these, but planting trees, we may reduce the amount of storm water runoff, which may reduce erosion and pollution in our waterways and may reduce the effects of flooding. Many species of wildlife depend on trees for habitat. Their importance is increasing as they continue to satisfy our everyday needs as they provide us food, protection, and homes for many birds and mammals. The role of trees in satisfying human needs has expanded with human evolution. One more thing, trees play an important role in maintaining balance in the ecosystem and keeping the environment clean and healthy. In mm. fact, ecological disruption or imbalance can lead to droughts, floods, mm. and many other disasters and natural disasters mm. that mm. equally harm mm. life and property which is why it is imperative that we save and conserve trees so as to be able to maintain balance in the ecosystem and ensure overall health and harmony we must plant more trees trees act as carbon sinks since they can absorb carbon dioxide from the environment in storage they help to decrease carbon amounts from the environment and purify the air. They also aid in the reduction of the toxic impact on the greenhouse effect. Our day-to-day -day activities are dependent upon trees. They offer a helping hand in reducing summer's devastating heat by acting as cooling agents. A city or a place without trees is called a heat island. The presence of trees breaks up this heat island and makes it bearable for living. Apart from that, they provide us with valuable medicine, fuel, timber, and shelter. My humble request to everyone, stop being so ruthless towards trees and not to be cruel to trees when they offer us so many gifts. If you cut a tree, you kill a life. If you save a tree, you save a life. If you plant a tree, you plant a life. Let us love trees with every breath we take until we Perish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manar. I love the enthusiasm. I want to go out and plant a tree right now. Um, I love what you said. When you plant a tree, you plant a home. That is beautiful. I think that people should understand that. And definitely it's part of the green lungs that we have all over the world that we need more of. So thank you for such eloquency. And we learned so much from you today. Thank you. Thank you, Manat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let us try to go to Nigeria once again. We have our Dr. Adel Goon. Please, Dr. Adel Goon, are you available? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, look at me. Yes, Hello. Not... yes, we hear you, but not clear. So let's try. Uh, I, can I speak? Hello. Hello, Professor. Yes, yes, we hear you, but not clear. Try. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in your midst. So I want to say good morning to uh, where you are listening from. Uh, the of this year's uh, World Environmental Day is indeed uh, timely. The reason is because um, our environment, for example, the ozone layer has been bastardized. Hence, uh, protecting our environment is very important. It is a collective responsibility. Uh, I've listened to some of the speakers share their view on how the environment can uh, be protected. Um, what I have on the list is uh, just two, I have two ways that uh, we can protect and sustain our environment. First, we need to understand that it's a collective responsibility. One of the things you need to do is, one, volunteer and educate. 
Many speakers that are here have volunteered their time and also their resources. Just to ensure that we are enlightened on how our environment can be protected. So it is a responsibility you have, whether in your community, in your workplace, anywhere you find yourself, you have that responsibility to volunteer your time to educate people in your environment as regards the importance of having an environment that is conducive. Another way that we can protect um, our environment is uh, providing recycling bin. Whether it's in your house, whether in your workplace, in your community, you have that responsibility to ensure that uh, you have a recycling bin that can be used to, um, to accommodate waste bin so that the environment will not uh, be littered with uh, decks that can have negative effects on um, humans and also the environments. So um, with this uh, few that I've shared, I think um, I have contributed my, uh, uh, my quota as regards um, how we can contribute to, to uh, protecting the environment. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, everyone, all the speakers and all the eminent uh, persons that are on this platform that I've given me their time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I definitely love your speech. It's very empowering for all of us to take action. We can all make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rade Ogun. Now we are moving to Peru. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Nuccia Seminario Hurtado. Welcome, dear Nuccia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I am deeply honored to be here in this academic event. Thank you very much. Just to point out, I am Peruvian. However, I live in Mexico, so I'm going to represent both of these countries. Today, I'm going to talk about, in a very short time, about indigenous people and the environment, because I consider that this topic plays a pivotal role in a society, and of course, as well in the legal framework. But before talking about uh, this relation, this connection between indigenous people and the environment, I need to point out about who are indigenous people. So according to United Nations, it is estimated that there are more of 370 million of indigenous people across the world. Uh, by way of illustration, uh, in Mexico, for example, uh, they have the greatest variety of indigenous peoples in Latin America, around 68 indigenous people. And as well, in Peru, they have 55 indigenous people. But this is just to mention as a kind of way of illustration. When we're talking about indigenous people, we need to emphasize that this is a kind of group that they're practicing unique traditions, they retain social, cultural, political, economic, and linguistic characteristics uh, that are distinct from those of the dominant society in which they live. So the uh, United Nations, for example, uh, has mentioned that it doesn't have a, a specific a notion of definition of indigenous people. However, uh, they consider, for example, that the common definition according to some authors and as well the United Nations and legal frameworks that uh, indigenous people are development, for example, this self identification, historical continuity, and as well they're practicing those characteristics such as cultural, linguistic, and economic. And of course, they have. Um, they, they, are, they, are, they are living in a specific land with a group of society. But I want to talk about nowadays this uh, connection between indigenous people and environment. It is widely accepted that biological diversity cannot be conserved without cultural diversity, of course. And for example, the United Nations throughout uh, 1962, 1992, sorry, uh, had published the, the, in the Conference on Environment and Development that was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. They, at the time, in, uh, state parties uh, talked about the uh, paramount importance of having a legal framework that protect and guarantee those uh, indigenous uh, rights and as well uh, connected with environment and territorial and terrestrial issues as well. So for example, it was adopted a convention, Convention on Biological Diversity, and this convention recognized 
that close dependence of many indigenous community on bi bi biological resources as well. And of course, uh, they uh, try to protect, in this case, the traditional knowledge, innovation, and practice in order to conserve biological diversity, including those species diversity. And uh, nowadays, for example, there are some legal frameworks that were adopted as well to United Nations. There are, for example, the Convention of Wetlands of International Importance, especially, and as well the Convention concerning the protection of the world, cultural, and natural heritage. And the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is an international treaty, many international treaty. And in this case, for example, they promote a, in the cooperation in order to manage and conserve and foster the sustainability use the in, in order the resources of the world and especially indigenous community. And finally, we want to talk about this uh, convention number 169 concerning indigenous and tribes people and independent countries. And of course, as well, the declaration of this, uh, of the rights of indigenous people. Those uh, treatments, uh, those international declarations, a specific they mentioned that the right of indigenous people to practice in the use of manage and conservation of natural resources, it's also recognized in the international human rights law and should be guaranteed in the states that are party to this international treatment. But how they should implement measures such as public policies with human rights approach, they should protect and guarantee environment to indigenous people it trying to implement, for example, so legal frameworks. So I, in my, in the best of my knowledge, I consider that this topic plays a pivotal role in society, especially from people who live in America Latina, because America Latina has the greatest variety of indigenous people, and as well as some countries and African nations as well, if you're talking about tribes, uh, tribes, indigenous, tribes, peoples. I, uh, nowadays should be a key concern a key of concert in order to guarantee these human rights to indigenous people. And of course, I consider that everyone should be aware about it, not only states, but of course, people as well, our society, in order to protect, guarantee, and of course, try to promote this kind of intercultural approach uh, to, uh, to other people, especially to uh, people who live in society, those Westerns, uh, Western land, and indigenous people that have a specific land in order to protect the environment. We need to be cognizant about it and we need to protect as well because there are some companies, for example, that they try to enter to this specific plant and unfortunately they try to uh, cut some trees or they try to log and of course this is not correct because it's a, a situation that can be vulnerable for indigenous people. I thank you very much for your kindly uh, for being here and I don't know if there is any doubt, but anyway, thank you very much, Professor Nara at the university that gives me this important invitation. Um, thank you, Nusia, for being with us. And I have been to Peru and I've had the opportunity to, to see that beautiful country and Mexico. And we also know that for thousands of years, indigenous communities have been taking care of the environment. So definitely we need to speak more about this. Definitely, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nushia. You are always welcome. Great speech and really uh, uh, listening from the other side. That is really great. Thank you. Uh, we are uh, moving to Mexico. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Islas, you are most welcome. Enlighten us with your speech. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I am very happy to share today with you. Uh, I will share some uh, screen for talk uh, quickly about this uh, very interesting topic and very important. Well, uh, I, I was listening uh, all the time to friends today and always um, all this is true. And now I, I, I think that we have to remember that uh, every year, Eight million tons of plastic end up in the ocean. Yes, uh, this is um, endangering with life and polluting ecosystems. We can see here how is the the plastic in, in the sea. Sorry, this is in Spanish because I I, I try to find this in, in Spanish. But here is a uh, Europe have the three point nine hundred, North America the. Uh, 
13.400 and all um, Latin America 60.400 and this is uh, interesting because here sorry in, in the less is in Europe and we have in Asia the most important yes in this uh, part then what can what have uh, we to do? As as we remember, we have four very important points in in this uh, topic. The first is bans on single use plastic. Uh, I can see that uh, in Mexico we have a lot of products that now uh, we don't uh, can buy more because it's private now. Yeah, um, I can see here now that I am living here in India. It's more, more. Uh, they are working more than in Mexico because in Mexico we have not a lot of these things than than the here in India are working. But yes, in so many things uh, we can use more. Yes, it's prohibited. They they don't sell more, and well, the second one is the taxes and economic incentives. Yeah, we have to, to remember that the green tax meaning it's a referral to intended to promote ecological sustainable activities via economic uh, yeah and of course the policy can complement uh, the need for uh, regulations this is a, this in mexico this is a not a working yet but i can see that here yet uh, this is important because uh, um this is a view, how can we work more in Mexico? Yeah, I, I can see it listening to all our friends and, and listen to all, all that they propose and that in each country they are doing. It's very good. And you can uh, um, make a one comparison with your country. What 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 more can you do or, or, or the society or this? But well, I will tell you this in, in two minutes. And we have to remember these two, the, the point number three about the standards for products. Yeah, um, now in Mexico, yeah, I, I can see that in different countries, there are these uh, standards. And this is very good because then we can start to, to check uh, immediately with all these, um, we can prevent a bit about this, yes? Uh, about the standard regulations with uh, the product and how can we do something better for uh, our work, yeah? And the number four is extended producer responsibility. I think that this is the, the most important and it's hand by hand with the two before, yeah? Because when we start to produce it with a lot of responsibility, we can find more um, products that can be better for, for our world, for our city, for the sea. And well, oh, this is very interesting. All, all, I think that all are talking all, about this all the time. In the case of Mexico, it's a very sad because uh, Mexico have uh, the dilemma is uh, what uh, he can do with these seven millions of tons of plastic garbage, yeah? Because in Mexico, only the country only recycles just a six percent of this. Yeah, what happened? It uh, collapsed the ecosystems. Then it is a big problem that we have in Mexico. We have to work more and more and more and more. We have a lot of campaigns um, of different ways, different topics. But in this case, I, I think that we need work more. We are working, uh, the people is working, but not a lot. Um, we need to do more. But uh, the question is, how can we do it? Who, not what? The, the question is who? I, 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 do, I tell the same always in all my conference. We have to start in, in our home. We as parents, uh, we as... Um, as family, in this small context, the principal context, when the students, when the children have the first education, is when we have to start. Because if we don't do it, this never will happen. Yeah. Um, when I arrived here to India, uh, we we have a uh, different um, box for put for put the each different kind of trash. 
And in Mexico, this don't happen yet. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, some cities yes, some families yes, no, no, no. Then we need to start in our home with our children as a, um, start to do and practice uh, every day, one day, another day, another day. And I think that we can do it. Uh, we can work faster than the, all that we are doing now because um, yes, maybe we have a lot of uh, proposal, a lot of ideas, we would like to happen a lot of things, but when we have to start, really, it's in our home. My question here for all, all that are, are here in this meeting today, who, what are you doing in your home? Really, you recycle? Really, you separate the, 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 the trash or the, bar, the garbage? Really, you do it in your home? Because it's very easy to talk here and say and propose and all. But what are you doing? This is the question, and this is the reality. Then we have to start for work in our home. After this, we can share and we can uh, teach to another friends, to another kid, to another person, another um, guys or her family, etc. Yeah. And well, this is my, my contribution today. I hope that you can um, can be good for us. And, and we have to take, we have to start in our home, not only talk. We have to do really the things. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm so happy that you brought up the question. What are we doing at home? You're leaving us with some homework. I think that that is where it all starts. And thank you for posing and thank you for making the presentation. It was wonderful. Thank you. Hi, you're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you, dear Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Uh, we learn what is, uh, what is uh, the situation in Mexico. We hope that you, uh, like an educator and all educators in the Mexico, will solve that very soon. Thank you. Now, moving from Mexico to United States of America, we have Maria Santiago Valentin. Welcome, respected Maria Santiago, to the IAU stage. Oh, I'm unable. I don't know why I can't access the camera. Please, can you open your camera? I don't know why it says unable to access camera. It happened also in my computer. That's what I switched to my phone. Um, I think it's your reception. You think it is? Oh my God, this is so unfortunate. But I was in, in both devices all this time. Um, maybe, maybe, that is a, maybe that is a problem because you are using two devices at the same time and the same Zoom. Please disconnect from one. Uh, we will call you. Uh, oh, I disconnected you... already from one because in the other one, I had the same issue. So I we'll came here to, to see one. if it was better, but it didn't work. Um, what can I do to have to disconnect? Uh, if you can, please, uh, please disconnect and connect again. Oh. Uh, we will call, we will call, we have, uh, we have Professor Rubin Garcia. So when you connect again, you will be ready, I hope. Dr. Dr. Rubin Garcia, oh. please. <laughs> Professor Rubin Garcia, mute yourself, please. Right. Am I audible? Yes. 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 Great. Clear, Thank you very much. And Thanks to IIU for this kind invitation. If we have to talk about our beautiful planet, we have to say that Earth is the only place we know of it in universe that can support human life. Yet human activities are progressively making the planet less fit to live on. Current attempts by a quarter of the world's people to carry on consuming two thirds of the world's resources by half of the people simply to stay alive are destroying the very means by which all people can survive and prosper. Everywhere, 
fertile soil is either built on or flushed into the sea. Otherwise, renewable resources are exploited beyond recovery and pollutants are thrown like wrenches into the machinery of climate. As a result, the planet's capacity to support people is being irreversibly reduced at the very time when rising people or human numbers and consumption are making increasingly heavy demands on it. In developing countries, for example, hundreds of millions of rural people are compelled by their poverty and their consequent vulnerability to inflation. To destroy the means of their survival in widening circles around their villages, they strip trees and shrubs for fuel until the planks wire away and the villagers are forced to burn down and stubble. The 400 million tons of dung and crops wastes the rural people burnt annually are badly needed to regenerate soils already highly vulnerable to erosion now. That the planks that bind them are disappearing. So the way to save the world, this is the big question. What is the way to save the world? And we can say that it is to invent and apply patterns of development that also conserve the living resources essential for human survival and well being. Living resource conservation is often thought of and threatened as a specialized of somewhat limited activity. But in fact, it is a process that cuts across and must be incorporated in all human activities. For this to be achieved, each of us, each of us will have radically to reorientate our view of the world and of our place and role in it. Meanwhile, it is essential that conservation and development be fully integrated without delay to ensure that in their quest for a higher quality of life, people protect those parts of the biosphere that need protecting and modify the rest in ways that it can sustain. For this, we <laughs> need a world conservation strategy and we have to start by changing our attitude in front of the conservation of the nature. This is very important because if we all by one by one by one have a mindset of contribution to our mother nature, we will work together to have the great result, which is to heal the world. As Michael Jackson once mentioned in his famous song, heal the world. And this, this is our task. Thank you very much. Greetings from Lima, Peru. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. World conservation strategy. Wow, I think that it's, it's a need and it's an urgent call. Thank you for that call of action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, great Ruben Garcia, always. Uh, let us try with our Marcela Galar Martinez from Mexico. Marcela, do you join again? Okay. It's Maria Santiago, I think. Hey, Maria right. Santiago Valentin. Yes, Maria Santiago Valentin, welcome. <laughs> First of all, I apologize for all inconveniences. I was in the kitchen. No, it's, a, it's then I was okay. picked up from it's the kitchen okay. from one of my family. I had to come to my room. Then I realized I hadn't had access to camera. Um, I've been um, following, I've been doing other work, but I've been listening to everybody's presentation and this is very inspiring. And I commend both of you for uh, leading this effort at the global level. 
So I live in New Jersey. I am not a, a, an expert in the environment, but I've been advocating for the environment since 2010. Um, I first started with Climate Reality Project. Now I am a, an environmental commissioner in my town. And I work in different organizations in the state of New Jersey. Okay, so um, from what I from what I had I heard, yes, there are things that we can do at the at the individual personal level, and the ways that we consume our world. There are uh, other things that we can do at the local level, with our, in our in, in, within our municipalities, and also there are many things we can do at the policy state level, and these um, things that we do at the state level will. Um, give, um, I would say, examples for global leaders. Um, we are working on a green amendment in the state of New Jersey. The green amendment will be included in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. And we are uh, trying in different groups to have the support of the legislators. If that gets approved and passed by the Assembly and the Senate, that will be um, the first time we have a uh, in a constitution that we are uh, in, we have the right to have a clean air, clean water, and that will halt many corporations from uh, trying to pollute our environment in their practices. So yes, at the policy level, things can be done. We have a progressive equity uh, energy uh, coalition of many organizations. So now the conversation in New Jersey is moving from climate change and the environment to energy equity. We want that the systemic way our governments have worked with issues that have to do with environment change, change uh, to take into account the communities that are more vulnerable. And those are the communities that are impacted by the environment and climate change that do not cause it. At the local level, in our municipalities, every munici municipality has a has a environmental commission. We are all volunteers. So we look into practices that keep the environment in our towns clean. For example, we are trying to push the city council to approve an anti-idling resolution. We also have a J3 commission. So if when a project wants to build in our town, um, we submit, we review, we review the commission review, the environmental commission reviews the proposal. And if they want to remove trees, okay, what, what are you proposed uh, to, re how are you gonna replace the trees that you are going to remove because of, your, your, of the project that you want to bring? Um, we also passed a resolution on plastic bag, plastic bag bans at the local and also at the um, state level. I don't know if I have my five minutes, <laughs> but I, I'm trying to share um, that is in order to in order to have equity and equitable environment for all of us, we need to uh, target it in at Hello. different levels. And as advocates, oh. and as advocates, um, we should partner with other organizations that are aligned uh, with our mission and core values. Um, I'm going to tell you this is hard work because what I do for the for the environment is volunteering all the time. I'm an educator. What I is separately from I do from education because I'm a special educator specialist. So, and it's hard work, it's tiring. We move one step forward, two steps back, um, but we have to continue. Um, we also have to think on the way we're going to outreach in these efforts at the global, uh, in policy, in education and advocacy. And um, education is important, but for education, I mean informing the community. And sometimes we have to, um, adjust the language because our community think that this is a topic only for the scholars and it shouldn't be that way because to have everybody involved, we have to simplify the message um, to our community so they can be part of in the decision making. Remember, if we are not, uh, and I heard that from someone else, if we are not in the table, we are in the menu. And I think that's 
my presentation. And um, thank you, Dr. Virginia Rivera, um, for this invitation. Thank you, Maria. Um, I have to say that speaking from the advocate side is something that's new, but we're all advocates. If we really want to learn more and we really want to change, it become, then we become an advocate of the world that we live in. And definitely, um, I think that we've talked about a lot of things, but we haven't really talked about the le legislative part. And it may be called differently in all different countries, but we know that that is the top level. We start at the bottom and then we really need to impact. Um, at that. So thank you so much, Maria. We will be inviting you again to have this important conversation. Thank you for giving us your time and your speech. Thank you. Thank yes, you thank you. Thank you. Great, Maria from the United States of America. Really very impressive, informative. So today, uh, Professor Charles, are you available? Professor Charles, do you hear me? I'm always available. Always available. Please open your camera, our great Vice Chancellor. We want to see you. Okay. Yes, and we want you oh, to okay. give us a now. vote of thanks today. Wow, you don't want me to speak. I want to speak. I don't want to give vote of thanks. I don't want me to speak. Anyway, let me give vote of thanks. Maybe tomorrow I will speak. Okay, will speak. No, 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 no. Speak today. Speak today. I will speak today. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I thank God for all the speakers. I thank God for all the audience, all the listeners. And I thank God for God who did it fit for us to have this program. Our co-founder, the research president, I thank God for you. God has used you today to give uh, at least to moderate this great occasion. I wish to tell every one of us, which every one of us, happy World um, Environmental Day. Not all nature for sustainability future or sustainable future. We need to protect and restore our environment. So taking, collect, taking action collectively now is paramount. Reducing the spread of human impact on the physical environment by not touching things that are streets in their natural states. This can mean both the natural environment such as rainforests and the cultural environment of an ancient civilization. The SDGs provide an unprecedented opportunity to protect and maintain our natural capital, which the sources of the benefits that, net, that nature provides the humanity, such as climate regulation, free water and biodiversity. There has been a constant nature versus natural debates among professionals. While nature is the generic predisposition or biological makeup of an individual, nature is the physical world that influences the nature. There are four principles of sustainability in nature. Sustainability used to indicate program, initiative, and action aimed at the preservation of a particular resource. However, it actually refers to four distinct areas, which include woman, social, economic, and environmental. Let's look at the environment sustainability. It is our job to ensure our future generation have healthy place to live and minimize our damage and the earth biodiverse ecosystem. When we are feeling distressed or out of touch, many of us go for work. We search for forests, parks, beach, and country roads to feel more at peace, connected to nature. Given that fact, it's no surprise that human well-being is linked to the health of the environment. 
About 24% of the global human death are caused directly or indirectly by avoid avoidable environmental factor. To live long and healthy life, we need to, to we need and deserve unpolluted air to breathe, clean water to drink, and to live in places free of toxic substance. As a global po population grows and we begin to experience the long-term consequences of excessive energy use and industrial growth, we must prevent further damages. For businesses, sustainability means running a business through sustainable practices and securing future growth potential without causing too much damage to the environment. Environmental sustainability involves making life choices that ensure an equal, if not better, way of life for future generations. Environmental sustainability aims to improve the quality of human life without putting unnecessary strength, strength on the earth supporting ecosystem. It is, it is uh, about creating an equilibrium between the communalist human nature and living world. We can do this by living in a way that doesn't waste or unnecessarily deplete natural resources. Environmental sustainability is paramount because of how much energy, food, and human-made resources we use every day. Rapid population growth has resulted in increased farming and, ma ma and manufacturing, leading to more greenhouse gas emission, unsustainable energy use, and the deforestation. We need more energy and material than ever before. Despite this, our planet can only provide so many resources before they begin to deplete. So business must step in and do their parts. They have more power than any group of individuals, and they can help secure a liable future by investing in sustainable and responsible practices, take and making sure reducing water, using uh, uh, using um, using commerce, clean energy, and paying fair wages. Let's take a more sustainable lifestyle, like using less water, reducing our 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 meat consumption, switching to reusable products to reduce our dependence on single-use plastic. Let's allow switch to renewable energy in warehouse, factories, offices, and cutting down on single-use plant plastic in manufacturing. It reduces our global carbon footprint and reduces our reliance on fossil fuel and other harmful energy. Switch to a green energy utility company. Resources like wind, so solar power, energy are all infinite sources and will not deplete, deplete. Switching to a green energy company is one of the simplest and most effective way to make a difference. Cook and bake with your own meal and snacks rather than relying on the food in the plastic, no recyclable packaging. Cooking in batches is another great way to use less energy and reduce waste. This bottle water and drink from the tap, plastic bottles take about 450 years to decompose. So consider it. If it is worth it for the sake of one's drink, instead of for a reusable water bottle or a water filter jar to your refrigerator, rely less on your car, waste or circle when possible. Replace light bulb with more energy effect bulb. Eat locally, 
This support food products with low eye, with low air, uh, with low air meals. Try to eat food that have not traveled far to make it onto your plates. Resell, repurpose, and donate unused item. Recycle glass jar to store dry food. Looking at all this work, we are trying to make sure that things work out fine. We are trying to make sure everybody's healthy. We want to, to make sure an environment is okay for us. We need to plant trees, do a lot of things, do things that will make us sustainable. So that the best of time, we should be able to be happy. Everybody will be happy. We don't want to be seeing people dying. We don't want to see people having one or two sicknesses in their body. That is why all these things are very important. As we are celebrating today, we pray that God will give us the grace to keep on celebrating on a daily basis, not only today, so that the message shall go around the world and it go around the world and God will give us the grace to do it accordingly. As we do it, the blessing of God shall remain upon us. Thank you very much for listening. And I thank God for my sister who has moderated this occasion and the other uh, Virginia. I thank God for you too. I thank God for IAU. I thank God for everybody listening. May God come to bless you. Thank you. IAU is the is the best. I use the number one in the whole world. I wish <laughs> you to partake in our activities. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you, Professor Thank Charles. You so God bless you, you, your speech, wonderful message, Thank wonderful you. and great speech. Thank we are really you. honored to have a great vice chancellor and Thank our you. great uh, Professor Charles from Nigeria. You are doing a very great work and we are proud of you at IIU. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Today, yeah. today we wanted to finish with you because this event will not have a sense without you and no value with our great Professor Charles. Thank so you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all our great eminent speakers, change, change makers. Today, we celebrate the World Environment Day, event of today. Today, first day is finished. We have a galaxy with more than 150 international speakers, educators, entrepreneurs, youth, and all our change makers. We nurture nature for sustainable future today. Tomorrow, we will again focus on the urgent needs for the collective action to protect and restore our environment. We want to thanks to our great sir, Sir Piyush Pandit for giving us this opportunity for great IAU. And yes, let us, let us say for him, he is a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist who provide in the last two decades, education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. He possessing the excellent administrative verbal communication and writing skills. He's a next gen speaker, a passionate writer, receives so many recognitions for his efforts, for his contribution, for the betterment of society. You see today, you yesterday and also tomorrow, every day, we are working for the betterment of society under the leadership of our great founder, a multi awardy visionary, a recipient of so many awards, the governor awards of Rajasthan, Makarastra, the plethora of national, international awards. So that is a visionary Piyush Pandit and he, he had a one dream, no child this globe should be deprived of education. He publicized the World Education Policy Web, One Education, One Foundation, One World. And he's a founder also, Swarabhar Parivar, chairman of Piyush Group, worldwide recognition for contribution for the betterment of society, a multifaceted personality and giving creative works for his work. And now, he has not, he has established a e village a e village for all students around the world with a great new school with St James International School so please you are all called to bless the school to bless also the big interactive interactive uh, project called Baika B B in India, be in India at 27 June, you have still opportunity to apply to visit a beautiful country of India. 
to learn about the culture. And yes, not only that, e-village will, will be a big education center and a center for the rural tourism. So if we talk about the environment, if we talk about the earth, if we talk about sustainable development goals, e-village is an example of all of that. And yes, we have so many actions, plant a tree. You can plant your tree, your, your name can be uh, your name can be noted with the tree. So give uh, so give that that opportunity is waiting you. Don't you don't miss that great opportunity. So today we come to the end of our session, our first day event of the World Environment Day. It was amazing. It was awesome. We learned. We listened. We have so many eminent, I said, guest speakers, change makers, who give us a message, who give us solution. We have a lot of things to think. We, we let us finish with less words, more action. Do like IAU is doing every day. So till tomorrow, stay safe, stay blessed, and please join us again at the same time at 5 p.m. East. Dear Nada, dear Nada, please, please. I have no words to describe this important day. Oh my God, it was really a truly celebration of knowledge sharing. Amazing guests, amazing speakers, amazing young people. Wow, beautiful participants. Oh my God, and uh, well done. Congratulations, best IAU hardworking team. Bravo, bravo, brilliant work. Thank you so much, founder, Mr. Peyush Pandit. On June 5, the world celebrates the International Day of Environment Day of Environment Protection. Yes, this is year the countries of the world are united against the pollution of the years with plastic waste. According to today's data, there will be more plastic than fish in the oceans by 2030. In order to change this endemic reality, it is necessary for everyone to be involved in the fight against plastic. So congratulations to everyone on this wonderful day. And I am also looking forward to Tomorrow, important day. IAU is a really change. IAU brings a change. IAU is a revolution. Congratulations, dear Nada. So proud of you. Dear Snitka, congratulations all. Wow, well done, well done. Virginia, dear, well done. Congratulations, dear. I am very Thank so you. Thank all. you to our great uh, Europe uh, head, uh, Dr. Inga Karcilava. Uh, I didn't want to miss you, but I think that I, I wanted to put you tomorrow to have a speech and to be also with I you. am always with us, you know. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.